Four players by Barstool Sports. We are back. We have a big show. We have Jeremy Roenick joining the show. I will say, as a hockey guy growing up, St. Louis Blues fan against the Chicago Blackhawks, against Jeremy Roenick all the time. Um, this is one of my favorite interviews we've ever done. JR's a huge golfer. He was playing in the Hilton Grand Vacations uh, Tournament of Champions last week, the celebrity portion, obviously. Um, he has some history at Barstool Sports and being on Barstool Podcast. We were a little nervous going into it because of that history, and he just led the interview with it. Um, he's real. He's raw. He's candid. He told stories about playing golf with President Trump when he was president. Um, unreal stories about old time hockey, the difference between then and now. I know it's not a hockey podcast, um, but if you're just a sports fan or a fan of greatness in general, he's obviously a, a hockey hall of famer. He was a huge part of uh, hockey broadcasting for many, many years. Um, and it's just a really, really good interview. So JR, um, make sure you stick around, listen to that. And then Danielle Kent, uh, four play bump. We had her on the show, the last show. Um, she goes out and just fucking won. She won down there. We were there all week. Um, big week for us. We got, what, six interviews while we were down there in Orlando. Um, and then Danielle Kang. And I was looking at it. I mean, obviously she wins. It's really cool. You feel like, oh, yeah, Danielle Kang's awesome. She wins tournaments. She's a major championship. Like, that's her sixth win ever. So, like, she plays golf tournaments all the time, every year. Dozens of them and just doesn't win. And last week, she just won. She won the fucking golf tour. It's phenomenal. I mean, we talked to her for an hour, and I I tweeted it out, and I, it meant no disrespect to Danielle Kang, but we talked about nothing for an hour. I mean, she said she didn't know anything about the golf course. We talked about mermaids. We talked about if we're <laughs> we're real people, if we're living in a simulation. She asked us if we were going to Disney. She said maybe she'll go to Disney if she can get out of like the the pro am in in time. Everything about it felt like it was just a mallet in type of week for Danielle Kang from our point of view. Meanwhile, she said that she had worked like four hours on the front nine on her Tuesday practice round. It's just um, you forget that when they're done recording and they leave us and like we all are having fun and we go to Disney and eat our our milk our milkshakes and our brownie sundaes and our steak sandwiches and all that stuff and we're discussing human beings, that she goes back and she's a professional athlete. It's hard for me to make that connection. Where it's like, all right, we're hanging out with her. She's one of the boys, the way she was talking. It's like, all right. And then she just goes out and wins like an LPGA event. I can't make that connection of how good of an athlete she is because of how awesome she is. And I struggle with that with all of our guests. The fact that they go out and do these things. Um, it's It really is mind-blowing that she went out and won that tournament. The way she was talking about how she knew nothing about the golf course. And I felt like I was just talking to one of my buddies. And you watch her on TV making these eagles and draining these putts. And so who is that? I don't know. <laughs> Who's that person that is doing all that stuff? Like, yeah, how no, can I someone agree. be that Who normal? Knows. How can someone be that yeah. normal and that awesome? And then also that amazing at golf. You can't compare everybody to Bryson. I mean, like there are people out there, like she might be like deflecting or saying like, you know, downplaying how in tune she is. I mean, she spent the whole day playing nine holes. So if you put, he spent the whole day, like, putting around night like she did at least admit to that so but she does make it on our level of like no i'm just like here like having fun so you can talk to her as a human being but certainly everybody's not like bryson which is just you can't even talk to that species <laughs> she's a little I'm bit with, I'm with Frankie. there's what's that a little bit kisner-esque where kids yeah. plays it off like that too and then you learn like he got there two and a half hours early and he's with the physio and he's in the truck and he's working on his body and he's like when he grinds, he grinds. She reminded me of that a little bit. And like Frankie said, she said it took her three hours to play the front nine. She let three groups go through. Like she was working as hard as humanly possible to learn the front nine of that golf course or nine holes, whichever nine she was playing that day. Um, so you're right. It's cool that she sat there and shot the shit with us. We were supposed to do the interview with her a little behind the curtain at noon. And then she was supposed to tee off, I believe, at one. And she was like, how long do you guys want me for? And I was like, well, 30 minutes, you know, at least would be great. She's like, well, do you want to go like longer? Because if you want to go longer, I need to come at like three or four and we can just talk forever. And we were like, yeah, let's do that. So that whole hour long conversation about talking about nothing was her, her also being aware that she was going to talk about nothing with us and that <laughs> she's going to talk about nothing with us forever. She needs to do that later in the day, not when she actually has shit to do. So she's just the best. I'm with Frankie. There's still a total disconnect for me. For whatever reason, I can't wrap my head around 
these professional athletes doing what they do while also speaking with us at any point in time. For whatever reason, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, I, it's stupid, but it's human nature. I put myself in her position, right? Like, all right, I'm down here, tournament of champions. I'm playing this week. I'm a professional golfer. This is my job. If, if that were me, I think I would be in my hotel room until I had to go to the golf course and like practice and then go right back. Like I would be a ball of nerves. I'd be freaking out. I'd be like, oh my God, I got to play in front of people. There's these expectations that I'm this person and I've won this major and this many tournaments. So I just have to be laser focused. I certainly don't have time for this stupid fucking podcast where we talk about mermaids and conspiracy theories and whether or not we should be eating seafood. I would just be focused. And But this is a credit to her because she's – it's it's part of her it's just who she is she's loose she's like yeah i don't know much about the golf course but i was out there for a few hours trying to figure out just the front nine i can come talk to you guys it's pretty relaxed and chill and then when it's go time it's go time and i'm gonna try and win this tournament and you know sometimes i am actually going to win the tournament and that's what she did it's just a different level and for me there's a disconnect that i don't understand and it just makes what these people do all that more impressive yeah it does it's also a plug to go watch that four man scramble against her. Yeah. And you know, the interview is not the only piece of content we've done with her. We played, we played around with her for five hours and we got to see her up close play golf. And it was a course that she, like we didn't love and she didn't know. And she still was amazing and came all the way back and stormed back to try and tie us up. And it's a great match. And I don't think it's gotten as much love as it should on YouTube. It's, it's, it's got to get more views because of how awesome of a person she is. Um, and hopefully this win will catapult, that side of you know people wanting to watch more content with her let's make this about us i love it i think that's a great call yeah i got a small <laughs> update that my brother just texted me that i have to share because frankie was just chatting and if this happened to frankie i think he'd blow the whole place up so my oh, brother no. is flying home with his two kids and his wife today from florida they're checking in their bags whatever like in line the guy and it's a small like regional airport the guy who is checking in bags checks in two bags and then quits his job. He's done. He quits his job, walks off. Yeah. Now all planes, everything's just delayed because he checks in for multiple airlines and he's done. He walked out. And I'm like, no, 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 this is not to be believed. He's like, my brother's like, yeah, we're just, I don't know when we're going to leave because we need to get somebody new in here to check the bags to get us on the airplane. It's over. So the guy stopped the whole airport. He just quit. He quit. My brother, I go, what do you mean he quit? He goes, he just quit and he walked off and he's gone. How does that I not happen me- more often? I, have- right, I was going to say, I, I get your bro- being in your brother's shoes and being like, we're screwed now. But on the flip side, I love a rage quit. And just like, I'm done. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. I, I reached my limit and I am, I'm just leaving. I'm walk- I'm just at one, like right in this second, I am an employee of this company, but I'm just going to head towards that door and now it's over. And I don't have to deal with this shit anymore. The energy he came into work with today, he he got in, he checked two bags, and then he's done. He was so close to quitting prior, he, he just needed to see one more bag tag, and he's like, you know what? And it was your brother's, I'm done. It was your brother's bag. He's like, one more, one more 51 pound bag, and I'm fucking leaving this place. Yeah. All right? I'm getting out of here. And then the first, the second bag was 52 pounds, and he was just. See ya. I'm okay. Out. I'm done. Okay. One time. Okay. When I was I'm a done. kid. When I was a kid, like probably fucking 20 years ago, we went to breakfast one time with the whole family and we're sitting there, we order our breakfast and it's like 45 minutes go by and we got nothing. I'm telling you, like nothing, no drinks, no food, no updates. So eventually I believe like my dad (laughs) gets up and goes and like finally grabs somebody and asks, he goes, Hey, uh, we ordered food like 45 minutes ago. What's going on? They go, Oh, your server quit. And we're like... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what do you mean? Like, yeah, they just like quit. So, so like, <laughs> we, I, we, I, we don't know what to tell. We don't have anybody. And we were like, oh, so like, should we just leave? And they're like, you know, you kind of do whatever you guys want. But we were just like, <laughs> so it's over. Like the yeah. whole experience now is just over. And we sat there, dude, for, like we got, no, we didn't get our chocolate milk. We didn't get orange. We got nothing. <laughs> like, yeah, your server just like, they just left. We're like, oh. It's amazing right. when when shit hits the fan in some of these places. People are making minimum wage or what? I'm, I'm not saying that guy at the airport was. I don't know why he quit, but it's amazing when things are so busy and so hectic that these people that you know they don't give a fuck about their jobs that they actually stick it through there because 
it could be full on chaos if people just start doing oh, what yeah. this guy did. Where it's just up, oh, you know what? I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Dude, I'm what's just this, picturing what's his exit the scene to... from from I think you should leave where he's like, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> he just gives up. Where try which one is that? I know. I'm trying to think about which one that oh, was. Oh my god, he's like, I'm done. They're like, You're not done. He's like, Okay, no more. <laughs> it's just you Damn, can't, I you can't, can't think of which you one. You can't say no more. You have to continue you have to continue on. <laughs> Dude, I'm also just picturing like how did he leave? Like, you know how you have that little weighted <laughs> section and there's the stand there that he sits behind? I mean, if, if that bag comes through and he just walks over the weighted stand, just clears out, just gets the first cab out of there. Like, what was his exit path? That is just... I, just, I picture him, yeah, ducking under those ropes to get, like, <laughs> through the lines. Like, people are like, where's he going? Where's he going? You're right, though. Lurch. Yeah. <laughs> You're right, though. Like, he probably went in there thinking, like, all right, I got rents due in a week. Like, I just yeah. got to... We're just going to... Tough gotta it out. Tough it out. Put our... Like, keep our head down and go. And then there was just one thing, and apparently it was your brother's bags where he was just... I'm out of here, and you know, best of luck to that guy. I hope he, I hope he finds happiness. I hope he finds what he's looking for. It, I don't, it wasn't my brother's bag per se, but he was in line. So, gotcha. I'm not going to say us fat severances showed up, and that was the final straw that broke this guy's back. But you know, my brother did see it. He's so now, yeah, now he's just in the airport, and he might be in Florida for a couple extra days. You guys don't have a great bag history in the in the Lurch um, family tree. As is with your, your, I think you're still looking for your United bag that Frankie saw on the carousel and just waved at it. I did get that back about about eight months later. So yeah, that was <laughs> that was a tricky one. Frankie waved goodbye to it as he got to Newark, and Trent did too. So I don't know why he's laughing, but they both just arrived my, about eight I, hours I, I just, before I, I did. I put my hand on it and I was like, "God bless," and I left. I know we talked about this not long ago, but we were just together at LAX <laughs> after the impossible connection, and then. Our world separated. Yep. Uh, boys, I have a new golf game to introduce really? you guys to. You're just a brand new golf game. So, uh, it's called Animules, and this is a game. Two weeks ago, I believe it was. Um, these guys, Gary and Mike, who came up with this game, flew out to Arizona and said, "We got to teach you this new game." Everybody's looking for a new golf game all the time. At any given moment, you're looking for a new golf game. It's called Animules, okay? A N A M U L E S. You download the app. Um, I'm gonna oh. talk about it. I'm gonna start by showing you guys the logo, which is awesome. Yep, it's a mule. Look at their logo. <laughs> it's it's a mule and two golf clubs. It's a good so, logo. Here's Animated how this game mule. works. Animated mule. And a mule. Not Elwood. Here's how this game works. There's certain, um, there's a bunch of actually, different uh, animals for different kinds of golf shots. For example, an armadillo um, is if the ball lands on or bounces off the cart path, okay? And once you uh, get an animal, animule, you have that animule um, until somebody else does the same thing. Whoever has the most of these animules, whenever the beverage cart comes by, has to buy for everybody. That's the entire game. And it is awesome because you could be playing horribly. You could be playing terrible. You could be playing really well. It doesn't matter. If you do any one of these, um, I don't want to call them objectives, but if you accomplish one of these things, whether you're trying to or not, you pick up that animal, you have the most of them, beverage cart rolls up, you got to pay and buy for the entire round. And it is really fun. And I'm talking this armadillo thing is a good example where like somebody will hit one off. They'll be a little rattled and spraying off to the right. It's the car path. Everybody goes, oh, armadillo. And everybody starts going nuts. Um, it's a phenomenal game. A ton of fun. Animals. Um, obviously, everybody loves animals. Animals are cool and cute. They get all these little. Um, I'm showing you guys. The are they right now. are the objectives, quote unquote, largely Frog positive or, or negative? Are they negative? Generally negative. So you get okay. a rock lobster is if the ball hits a rock. Okay. A quail. If you lose your golf ball, you get a quail. So is this, so the app, so are you like, is the app just the rules or are you like plugging in what happens in your group? Like what, what explain the app to me? That's a good question. So the app tracks exactly the status of everyone. So if you get one of those, you hit it, the animals go in and you're the zookeeper. So the zookeeper is the okay. person that has the most of the animals. Um, and this app again in real time, each hole, you just plug in what's going on, and then it tells you who has how many, and you can just follow that in real time. And then there's a couple different ways you can play, but whenever the beverage cart comes by, typically, 
that person buys the round and then everything clears out and starts over again fresh. So you just got to dedicate one person as the zookeeper and that person's keeping track of, and it's a beverage cart game. I like it. I mean, we, there's always this weird politics when it comes to the beverage cart. Like you don't know who's going to buy the next one. You always want to try and buy the first one, especially if you're the guest. And then they are saying, no, it's on me. Come on. You're at least this makes it like, let's play a little game for it. And if someone's happens to have the shit luck today by hitting all these rocks and the cart pass, like it's going to, it's going to be a pricey day for you. Try and keep it in the fairway. Let's try and keep things um, straight. I like it. It definitely adds There's, a different wrinkle to it. And if someone can keep up with like being the zookeeper and on their right, phone. I, I think that's the best part of the game is that somebody's a zookeeper. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. if we're just having fun with terms, I think if I'm we're going out for a round and I get to be zookeeper, I think there's some benefit in that. Dude, and it completely changes your mindset, right? Because like you go from, you know, you're trying to make pars and birdies and you care about your number. Number means basically nothing now. You're just talking about animals the entire time. Like a ringworm is a putt lips the cup halfway around but does not go in. Somebody could win the hole by five shots and have a four-footer for birdie, and it, it and it lips out hard. And everyone's like, oh, ringworm, and you, like, lose an animal on that hole. And then the beverage cart comes around the corner, and that guy all of a sudden has to buy everything. So it's just a completely different way to look at the game. You can download the app uh, for free, uh, available for free, again, in Apple, Android, app stores. Download today. Um, little link if you want a link it's www.animules a-n-a-m-u-l-e-s dot com slash download these guys that came up with it are like your quintessential golf boys they're like in their 50s from minnesota i played with them they've been telling the same jokes having a great time laughing with their boys playing golf for decades and they came up with this game so it's got a really cool Again, like quintessential OG origin story, um, and it's just a lot of fun. So go download the Animals app. Everybody's looking for a different way to play golf. Come up with something spicy, something unique. Um, Animals is a great way to go. Um, Disney. We went to fucking Disney last week. God. Shout oh out to Jordan. God. Our good friend oh Jordan. God. Yeah, shout out to Jordan. No one has ever hooked us up, maybe better, more, whatever, in any realm then our boy Jordan hooked us up. He's a Club 33 member. I don't know if I'm even allowed you're to not. say that. Feel like yeah, well, I, you're, I you're also you're not setting it up enough. You're like you're not descri- like you basically just announced that someone's an Augusta National member. Uh, just just in the middle of your sentence, it, he's can a part of the it? most. Ex- like, can words Friend? do it? Properly? He's a part of the most exclusive club in America. Let's just say, or maybe the world. One of the most exclusive clubs in the world. Five year Depending on who list. you're talking to. If you're talking Dude, to Dude, I don't know, probably, man. It is the most uh, exclusive. I don't know, man. Like, I think the most exclusive guess, yeah, people in the world it. can't get this. Like, it's five year waiting list. The numbers are not to believe on what you have to do to get. You know what I mean? Like, it's crazy. It's, it's another level of access. Listen, we were going to fucking Orlando, and anyone knows me, I, I love entertainment. I love the shows. I love. I love the big lights, the bright lights. That's just me, the pageantry. man. I love the pageantry. I love to be entertained. I cried at Jimmy Fallon. It happened. You know, the curtains opened, the roots played, the lights crying, went down. Sorry. And there's just something about that feeling. I get the goosebumps and I love it. And it's history, it's memories, whatever you want to call it. It's Disney, man. And we were going to Orlando for this tournament. And I said, if we don't bake in a Disney trip... I'm going to I'm going to do something bad. Like I I can't look at the map and say I'm 12 minutes away from the Magic Kingdom for my hotel and I cannot I can't not enter that that building. So we figured it out um that you know our good close personal friend Jordan um who we met at the golf course, he came down uh and 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 talked to us and we ended up loving the guy. He's like, hey, we I have these passes, and he goes, who's a Disney guy? And he looked at me, and he brought me over, like under a tree, and talked to me, like personally. He's like, I want to let you know I have these Club Thirty Three member this me- this membership, and I'm gonna give you guys a couple tickets here, and we're gonna have ourselves a day tomorrow. And I said, I I don't really know what that means. I'm gonna go back to my room, and I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up, and I can't wait to see the access that we get. But, dude, we ended up having a long day at the golf course, so we had like. I think who did we end up interviewing? We ended up interviewing Lee Bryce and it went a little bit longer and Kira Dixon um, and Kira Dixon. Yep. So like it kind of just went on for longer than we expected. 
And we ended up leaving the golf course around like 2.30, getting to the Disney area around 3.30. So we have from 3.30 to 9 to do as much Disney stuff as we want. And we don't know what kind of access we're going to get with this Club 33 membership. We showed up at Hollywood Studios, previously MGM. And I fucking love Disney, guys. You've heard me say that everything is Disney-like. Yep. Pinehurst is Disney-like. <clears throat> Whenever there's really good um, service, whether it be at a restaurant or a store or whatever, I say, wow, this feels it's- like Disney. It's your reference point to whenever we have a good time. If yeah. you're like, if you're having a really good time, you'll just say, this feels like Disney. And you guys never really grasped what I meant because you both had never no. been to Disney. You've no. never entered those those gates. And you didn't know the perfect, um, just like the symmetry of the streets and like the, the, the feeling that you get, the music, the charm, the everything about it, the, the magic. So we start off at Hollywood <laughs> Studios and... And Jordan's waiting for us at these gates, man. And we had like, bro, we, we walk, we, we go to drive in and where you're supposed to pay for parking. They go, um, yeah, it's going to be like $40 or whatever. And I said, we're club 33. And the guy looked to his partner and said, oh, and they said, you go right on ahead and you stay right and go on that, 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 that personal path to the, to the parking lot. And we said, yeah. Okay, it's like now this this word here, Club Thirty Three, holds some weight, fellas. Like we didn't know, <laughs> we didn't know specifically what it meant. But when I saw that guy look over his shoulder and go, "Oh," I knew we were in for a day. Jordan's waiting for us at the front gate. We parked in front of the front gate of Hollywood Studios. He's waiting for us at the front gate, and he goes, he gives us these little wristbands that have Walt Disney on them, and he goes, "Welcome to the happiest place on earth." And we walked in, and we went straight to Toy Story Land, and did the and did the um, Toy Story ride, and it was that Trent, was really fun. It was Trent and Riggs' first experience of Disney. We didn't wait for a second with these fast passes, and then we went to Star Wars, and it was. I mean, you guys can tell your experience. It was one of the crazy. We entered a movie in Star Wars in Hollywood Studios. Never seen anything like it in my entire life. We loved it. I, let me say this. I didn't know a mu- much about Disney. I thought every time that you would make the Disney reference, it, it was just like a little bit. It felt a little bit like lazy. Just calls everything like Disney. I didn't understand the encompassing reasons that you kept saying that is because of the perfection and because of the overall magical experience that they curate i didn't know that i was thinking roller coasters a couple rides it's gonna be great you have to immerse yourself in not just the park and the the story like you're part of the story when you are there when you go into toy story land like you get into toy story mode when we went into star wars world and we're walking around and there's a star wars marketplace and a bar and then we went on the millennium falcon Jordan was so mad at Trent that he wouldn't put us in the light speed fast enough. Like, oh, he was so Fuck. immersed. He loved it more than Frankie. He was giddy being like, put it at light speed, put it at light speed. And you're like, dude, we're in Star Wars right now. Like Trent is Chewbacca. We got Frankie's on solo. I'm back. I need to shoot these guys. Otherwise, they're going to knock us out of the sky. And then our pilots, I'm going to matter what they do because I'm back here. Me and fucking Ebug need to be shooting people. Like you're just immersed in the entire thing, which again, I wasn't fully prepared for. I thought maybe you'd ride a roller coaster, throw your hands in the air, get a picture and leave. I was obsessed with the entire storyline and the fact that you become a part of Disney when you're there. Yeah. For me, I'm in the same boat as Riggs for the most part. Like it, I had no nostalgia really attached to it because I, we didn't go there as a kid. Like that wasn't one of the family trips. I know going to Disney world is a big deal. We saw a ton of kids while we were there. That it's a kid place. And that just wasn't one of the destinations as, as a family where we would go. So I didn't really know what to expect. I thought it'd be a couple rides. I thought it'd be a lot of fun. I thought we'd eat some junk food, which we did. And then that, that'd be kind of it. But Riggs is right. It's, it's the commitment. It's everyone has to commit and, and it's the employees. It's the people who go there. Everyone commits. And if you do that, you have one of the best experiences of your life. Like when we went to the star Wars land, which was, honestly just incredible like they really built out that world like you're actually in the star wars world you walk from whatever part of the park we were in the whatever part the toy story is in to the star wars land and you're just you're in the movie star wars and you the people who are running the rides are in full commitment they're not like yucking it up and talking about things outside of the star wars world if they're in the star wars world they are playing their star wars part and it's that throughout the entire Disney World. I mean, we only saw what percentage of the park do you think we saw, Frankie? 
Yeah, so we had from 3.30 to 9, and we wanted to see the Magic Kingdom. So we spent probably two hours at Hollywood Studios. We saw some of the Club 33 access, which is insane. That took up some time, which was amazing. Something I never thought I'd be able to see, so shout out to Jordan. But, and just the workers there are insane, amazing. Um, so we probably spent like two hours Remember Jordan, at... Jordan, the worker in there? That guy... Oh my God! More about the tour guide history. And oh yeah, he than... was great. Disney just does it different, man, and they just know how to. They hold themselves to a higher standard. They really do. Like, like I, for me, growing up, we used to go to this thing called Hog Wild Days, and I know that's a very Iowa thing, but it was like a, it was like um, they would build rides in the middle of a field, and you would go and you would ride those rides that probably weren't like approved or checked within the last decade or so. I think Dwight, the does Dwight Schrute do this? Is called like the, the person, the hay, the person, the hay thing. The person running the ride was like probably a little drunk and like tattooed. It was just kind of like, whatever, like get on the ride. So that was my experience whatever. really with, a, with a theme park. And then you go to a place like Disney and you're like, Oh, that's what this is supposed to be. Yeah. We probably experienced like 25% of those two parks. There's so much that we didn't experience like the little mini restaurants and the places to eat and the characters that come out. I mean, like, you go and get breakfast and Winnie the Pooh and Tigger come out and all these things. And you're just like, what is happening? It feels so childish and ridiculous because it is, but it also makes you feel so different than you've ever felt before. I mean, it sounds like, like a loser to say that, but like, you feel like you're in a, a movie. You feel like you're a part of this play or something. Something's happening. Like you said, people are committing to something and you're just a part of it. And then you commit to it and you're just like, what's happening. Everything's beautiful. The hotels are amazing. The restaurants look insane. And just, I mean, I showed you guys, we're walking around. It's the busiest place on earth. There's a billion people walking around and there's not one piece of paper on the ground. Like all these disgusting Americans, all these fat people and just like disgusting humans. And we're all just like throwing ice cream on the ground and like popcorns shoving out of our mouths. And you look at the ground and it's sparkling, actually sparkling. Like they, someone's walking around with glitter and just, oh, like, like, it's just fucking insane what's happening. Like, where's the garbage going? Is it being sucked into the concrete? Where is it going? Because you know it's there. Every other place on earth is disgusting. It's immaculate. And I, I put up a picture from Disney. It's it's one of my better pictures. Hey, you and, took you over know, the internet. You took over the internet. Yeah, I wish, you know, I wish my brethren were in it with me for whatever reason. They didn't join me in the <laughs> picture. It's just me with Mickey Mouse ears on. But I had a couple people say, like, Oh, are you a Disney adult? Like condescendingly, like saying that's a place for children. Adults shouldn't go there. And people like that are are missing out on so much in their lives where they take themselves so seriously and everything is nine to five. I sit at a desk and then I go <laughs> home and I drink a glass of whiskey and I fall asleep on the couch. Like you, if you can't go to a place like that and just embrace everything and really you just get ruin some people's souls right there like you just that's, get there's some everything people listening out of that's what they do all the time and that you just you just i'm sorry yeah, but those people aren't, some of those people can be a kid i think trent's getting at like if you can't have a little like child in you <laughs> no right you need to be able oh, to adjust I like you can be Trent. that person just, you can definitely just, be that person that those people are very they're essential in, in some areas of the world but like also if you go into a situation like disney and you are you poo poo it or whatever. If you can't just throw yourself into it, then you're then you, I got nothing for you. And I really enjoyed the fact that you guys immersed yourself in it. You took it very, like I was really happy with your guys' experience. I was judging you the entire <laughs> time. Your test. Yeah, I was oh yeah, I was say. judging you the it entire was like time. Me, it's like me. It's like me at the Islanders game. I, oh yeah, I find <laughs> out afterwards that Frankie's making a report card of how well I'm paying attention to the game. I we I was we really, were on the stand. We knew we were on the yeah. stand. Oh yeah, and I you guys were. Far in a way better than I ever thought. I mean, you guys liked the little kitty rides more than you liked the bigger rides, right? Like the the um, Pirates of the Caribbean ride. You fucking you guys loved the stuff that I loved, the smell of it, and just when we went through the first part of the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, which is which is one of the oldest rides at Disney. You guys were like, oh my God, look at this. You're in another world. I love this movie. And even though like it's animatronic guys like fighting, you guys love that. It wasn't, you know what I mean? It was like the coolest part to see the thing. You guys fell in love with the stuff that I fell in love with all the little stuff. Um, so yeah, I love Disney Pirates so Caribbean much. Caribbean rides been like that for like 40 years, dude. I, I looked yeah, it up I mean, it, I was it's hard for a, a little bit. It, it was the ride before it was the movie. So it's like, that's hard. That's what Frankie broke that news to me. It's hard to wrap my head around. Yeah, they based the movie off the ride. So um, 
Really, really cool stuff. And yeah, so Disney, we got a vlog. I mean, we got a full vlog coming out Thursday. Yeah, we do. Oh my god, that's coming out on Thursday. The experience. So Jake Bass Holy just shit. updated me via text us, I guess. But we got Bannon Dunes episode four, which is um or no, episode five. It's the final episode. Last step, episode five, Band of Dunes, the actual so it's golf Band course, the OG, uh, yeah. tonight. So people are listening on Tuesday, YouTube, for Play Golf. And then Thursday, we have the vlog from Disney coming out. Wow, what a YouTube week. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. So one of the best courses on the planet, maybe one of the best public courses you can possibly play, literally on this blue earth. And then the, the happiest, most magical place on earth on Thursday. Just a lot of big things happening this week on the 4Play YouTube page that we're going to have to go subscribe, rate five stars, whatever you got to do on YouTube. You got you to gotta make sure that you have your reminder set for this week on our YouTube page. Disney yes, World is the happiest place on earth, and you will see that via the vlog, us having a good time. I will say there's going to be a stretch uh, during Space Mountain where it will seem like I am not having the best time in the world <laughs> because I was afraid. Dude, I'm old now, and, and I just I no. get dizzy easily. And I don't, I'm not turning into one of those guys who I explained earlier, but there is a part of me that's like, the Pirates of the Caribbean ride is perfect because it's, it's just like you're just – going through the water and there's things happening around you. There's not a lot of fast movements or my head's not getting jerked around. Space mountain was the last ride that we rode. And I, I think Frankie did that on purpose because he was like, all right, it's gonna be the last ride of the day. Let's just, let's do this. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And we went up to the ride to wait in line and you can see the, uh, I don't even know what you call those, the, where you sit, the, wherever you, where, where you're going to strap yourself in. It looked like a rocket, and it, yeah. it was built for speed. It was aerodynamic. Trent kept saying, those ones, things are built for speed, man. <laughs> Dude, they were. Because the other ones that we rode, we did. We rode some other, like, 4 out of 10 roller coasters. I heard one of the guys describe to someone yeah. who was asking. It was a 4 out of 10. And those ones, you strap in. The rides are the where you sit is a little clunkier, and you know that you're not in for, you know, a space ride. Space Mountain was the opposite of that. So during that ride, I think I – I yelled some some bad words and are you talking you're gonna feet see dangling? F- no, no, it was oh, dude. Okay. It was literally like you're those, one of those are built for speed. When you're when your feet are dangling, you know that you're about to go faster than you want to do. This was like feet like in the like like extended, so like you're almost in a Formula One car. Yeah, you had to be yes. as low and as aerodynamic and as strapped in as you could be. So that one was scary. And credit to Riggs, because we we sort of, before we got on, it was there was a discussion of where is everyone going to sit. And Riggs volunteered to go into the front. I'm pretty sure that was a harrowing experience for him. But I was third in in, in line, and I was still scared. I would say a part of me you can thought... see the track get eaten up, which is, like, exciting. No, you couldn't see anything. It's dude. pitch it black. Dark. It's it's pitch black oh, in there. Oh, I dude, it looks like you're I in was, space. I will say that was fifteen uh, percent of me thought like this is it. Yeah, dude, yeah, because it's know. an older you ride, see right? Anything? It's, it's, like, it's a, I, we're it's going an older ride, so you think fast. you're gonna get your head chopped off? Exactly, exactly. I was like, dude, if I just get decapitated here, will anybody even know? Yeah, like, <laughs> like the we'll, we'll know because we'll be covered in. What am I covered in? Well, this bullet that we're in is going to return to like the loading station and like Riggs's head is just not going to be there. Like they're not going to know where it, it was terrifying. That thing was fucking terrifying. I will say on those old school rides where, you know, it's old and you're like, man, I hope these screws are holding on. You kind of have that little like shimmy shake where it's mm. kind of like catches itself and it's not perfectly clean in terms of how it's Space navigating through that the tracks. Space Mountain Okay, yeah, that that throws me off a little bit. And if it's pitch black, I don't know if I like being front because, like T, you would know that it's gonna we're gonna turn left just based on you know nope, like rigs and whatnot, like a little bit. You'd have a sense of it where rigs has no sort idea. Of. Yeah, I you have none, dude. Like you couldn't prepare. You do right? like you're saying when you're gonna bank left hard, your body does things naturally to prepare for that. There, yeah. I just had like I would even mentally think like oh we might go left here and then we would just rip right as hard as you possibly could i couldn't <laughs> see anything dude i was in a house of whores up there but again i was the lead pony and i knew that you guys thought that was pretty brave so i was trying to put on a brave face yeah. it was a scary it was a scary experience i will say lurch it, it is there is a bit of comfort because you know you're not at hog wild days where you know that these machines are checked like yeah. crazy. Yeah, like yeah, that's good. there's always that fear. Even if you go to like a Six Flags or wherever, where you're like, I'm not so sure about these bolts on this yeah, 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 contraption yeah. here. But Disney, 
I mean, how I mean, how long has that place been open? You don't hear a peep about oh, this malfunctioned here or some kid went flying into the into the parking lot here. Like none of that stuff. So I felt comfortable in that respect, but still very scared about the bullet train that we were on. Yeah, no, it was fun, man. It was really fun to see you guys experience it. So watch it on Thursday night. I mean, I think for our viewers and listeners, if you have ever wanted to see me in, in the most positive state you'll ever see me in, it was it's that video. I mean, I, I'm unconditionally happy and unapologetically happy in that video. And uh, I can't wait to go back. We got to go back to Universal. We have to see more of Disney. So if we ever do a, a travel series there, we got to do the other parks. You guys have to see the Animal Kingdom. We got to go to Epcot and do the beers around the world. That would be a fun day. We got to do more of... Uh, of magic kingdom and then we have to go to universal and go to harry potter world that's just an yeah. absolute must do so we haven't seen the last of orlando i won't let that happen we've gotten a little taste and we need to um we need to finish we gotta finish that uh that craving i'm jealous i, like orlando. I kind of I, I like orlando it's a weird yeah, place it's, it's a weird. really weird place but i like it also had yeah it's just i mean you guys you guys fell in love with everything you guys are taking videos of the tram that goes in and that's like one of walt disney's greatest inventions like having the tram go through the original it had mickey uh, mouse on disney. it it was like a mickey mouse tram came yeah and by. it's it's quiet and it's futuristic and they made it in the fucking 60s in, in california and in the, in the original one so everything about this fucking place is just amazing and i love that you guys loved every part of it lurch we missed you it's it, you would have been a nice because you're a, you're you like to get into the uh in, into the bright lights you like the theatrics i've so got a you would, child in me too i you yeah, know you i like all that it. stuff i, I, I don't, don't know if you would have fit in some of the rides but <laughs> that's what i was yeah, thinking Rich like was like my head got chopped too. off you would have been like, a good addition you would have been a good that. addition yeah. well and also maybe next time i i don't want to say that our future experiences are going to be a bit tainted because i think we'll always be getting the lightning pass no matter what because if you don't I know it's like if you don't get the lightning pass, it's it's a tough go because we we waited in line. The most we ever waited was like three minutes. And there's it's if close. you don't have the lightning pass, people are waiting for an hour. hour Seven dwarfs ride was ninety five minutes, and we, yeah. we walked in and just got on the ride. Ninety five minutes? Yeah, it's sad. And I did that when I went when I went to Disney last before that's these. What, I went that's my, what people do. Yeah, well, yeah. My then girlfriend and, and I said we're. We're just here on this ride, and then we're going home. I yeah. we have nine. We have, it's a one shot deal. It's an hour and a half. Two hours, and right. we are on this one ride. And if we don't like it, it is what it is. Like, <laughs> right. So we're. I mean, we're very lucky in that respect, where we get these awesome passes, and we can just fly right to it. And there's like you're saying, people waiting there for an hour and a half. And you had said, Frankie, that they'll hand out games to the people in line to like mm-hmm. pass the time. It's just oh, it's, it's fun, madness. So. So, like, if we, I mean, we just have to get the lighting passes every time we go. Amazing. That's you just guys the way it has to be. believe what this son is doing to me right I now. see you oh, get I dominated. I mean, you're, you're ducked behind, behind the mic. Duck. You're I'm like, yeah. Well, you're I, thought you were, killed. I thought you were reading something. I was like, man, he's really into whatever he's Dude, reading. I'm trying, to get, trying to get away, away from look at this fucking that big ball of gas that's killing you right now. I actually don't know how far it is. What? Look at this. What am I going to do here? G4. I'm going to talk about G4. That's what I'm going to talk about. All right. So, these videos that we just mentioned. Um, especially the uh, abandoned dunes one, you can look at our feet, and our feet are rocking all kinds of different G force throughout the entire abandoned trip. Because, I mean, they make the best golf shoes. That's just I don't really know any other way to explain it. They make really comfortable golf shoes. They make stylish, classy golf shoes. They make cool. Um, the MG fours, the cool like you're walking on a fucking cloud type of golf shoes that have I don't even know what it is. I don't know if it's the soles the bottom but they did it like that layered cushy but stable technology that they came up with a g4 that the mg4s are, are famous for um that I, I don't know that you could physically argue any other shoe on earth not even golf shoe any shoe on earth is more comfortable than that shoe do you think there's a single shoe more comfortable than that no i just <clears throat> i just got my dad those shoes for his birthday and oh. he'd never experienced <coughs> excuse me guys you okay never, you, yeah i'm just choking on something i don't know what it is we stopped right. talking about disney and frank he's just dead <clears throat> now he doesn't care he um he's never experienced like good golf shoes before i mean people have roasted him before on my instagram stories for his shoes saying what are those and he had those 
black shoes where you kind of like click the back of them and you don't have to, you don't have to tie them. And he always just had the weirdest golf shoes ever. And I finally just got him a pair of proper golf shoes from G4. I got him the MG4s and he put them on yesterday and he comes over to me and goes, can I just have this insert in every shoe I've ever worn ever? Like at the restaurant, every, like I want this, I want to wear these forever because it is a different type of feeling. And it's not just us trying to sell the shoe. Like you have to go try it out, go to any store that sells G4, or whatever, put your foot in that shoe and you're going to understand what we're saying. It's different. It's, it's, you've never felt a soul like that ever. G4.com slash four. You get your first uh, order 10% off. You're welcome. G4.com slash four. Um, the Gallivanters, I think, are the best all-round shoe ever created. I'm going to wear those today at the Rossi. Um, and they've got many different styles. they got uh, camo styles. They've got some of the more classic with, like, the brown trim. Um, and they're just phenomenal. You could wear them in any set. If you went and played Augusta, you would, like, rock the Gallivanters. They're just made for that kind of look. They're super comfortable. You can walk in them cart in them no problem and then again if you want to get in terms of the uh more sporty and unbelievably comfortable ones um the mg4s they got the mg4 x2 so they got all kinds of good shoes so g4.com slash four um you get 10 percent off uh i feel bad speaking about dad getting roasted my dad's still mad at me i think from like two years ago i took a picture of him playing golf and you know my dad's an outdoorsman um a fisherman a hunter a, a bit of a farmer uh and he had like black cargo pants on and the top comment was that looks like a man that owns a lot of duct tape and i showed it to my dad and he just goes i do own a lot of duct tape <laughs> <laughs> yeah then it's fitting yeah. then he's wearing the right clothes because it's on brett so perfect <laughs> like i know the internet looked at it as like a dish and i showed right. him that and he's like yeah, fuck yeah. That's like, he was like pumped about he's like, that. He's like, you know how yeah. many situations you find yourself in where you can use duct tape? There's so <laughs> many. I, made a I need a lot. Man, there's like, he's like, you know, I actually need to get some more duct tape. I think that was yeah. like his. It yeah, reminds yeah. me, I got to get more. Yeah. <laughs> Should have some of my golf um, <laughs> uh, We got Hudson Swafford won the American Express. Not the most electric name of all time or player to watch, but he's a Peter Millar guy. So we just did yeah. a little G4 thing. Um, he looked great. Extremely classy. But if you're just a general sports fan uh, with the name and sort of the demeanor, I don't know that I don't know that you would call him the needle if you really if you were really needle played well. Needle played well this situation. tournament, by the way. I know people. Hey, a lot of people are well. people are wondering. People are being like, "Wow, I <laughs> wonder how he played." About it. He played pretty well. <laughs> he played pretty well. He didn't win. He's no Hudson Swafford, but uh, he played well. And then um, probably my favorite part of the entire weekend uh, was John Rahm with the video yesterday that came out uh, where he's walking by and he just, we'll put the audio in, but he just said, piece of shit fucking set up putting contest week. Piece of shit fucking set up putting contest week. Candid, what you want, what we're looking for. That's why we want guys mic'd up all the time. I understand they probably don't love it. They get a little bit, uh, they're vulnerable, they're exposed. This is what you want to see here. If this was captured in a three-second clip, imagine the kind of shit. Imagine the kind of shit that is just set out there all week long among these guys. Um, phenomenal clip from John Rob. Yeah, really good. And then also, whoever caught it, their buddy was standing right next to him. I was like, "Did you just get that? Did you just get that?" And it was just, yeah, it was a really good clip. And yeah, it's almost Rob you bring up an it. interesting point, Riggs. Like, if you mic these guys up, they wouldn't say these things. They might. Right. But they would largely probably avoid it. It's almost like, and it's not the way you want to do it, and it would not be a, a happy, candid relationship with the player. But if you just sort of like, you basically have to catch them in a moment where they, they don't want to be mic'd up, where you get the best stuff. So it's hard right. to like balance that. Because no, John Rom would, sorry. Rom is different though. Rom, even, I think even if you throw a mic on Rom, he forgets immediately, and it's just John Rom the entire round. But there are guys who would put the mic on, and they would know, and they'd be like, all right, let's just be... Let's not say anything crazy. So it's tough. Like, yeah, I would love to mic everybody up, but I also think that deters guys from saying anything. So it's kind of a tough song and dance. Yeah, I think they're all protecting their brand. And then, like, I'm just thinking about Rom. If you did have him mic'd up and he was 
focused on that. He's like, I can't say a word. I can't say a word. As soon as that mic comes off, I mean, he would just have a case of the Tourette's. He would just have a thousand curse words that would come out just to unpack it all because you know that just boils inside of him and he has to get that out. I'm sure he might play worse if he was mic'd up, honestly, because I think so. He couldn't let that tension out. It was a great clip, though. He was fucking mad. So, He's always um, mad, but. Tory Pines this weekend. Uh, we're going to be there. We're actually going up to the kingdom uh, on Friday, and then we're probably going to be at the tournament Saturday in San Diego. Uh, so excited. Big, big week. This always was, again, when Tiger Woods would play a full schedule, this is when Tiger would usually start his year. He won at Torrey Pines like 8,000 times. Um, so I always start to feel like the real PGA Tour begins um, when Torrey Pines starts, when the farmer's insurance starts. So um, big week for that. Uh, and then – I just have to mention the Bills Chiefs game last night. Uh was awesome. Crazy game. I was gonna say I was gonna say, like we're talking about Hudson Swaffer, and I get that this is a golf podcast for sure. There's no doubt about it. It's it's a big part of what we Debatable. do. Debatable. It's true. <laughs> true. But also We're about to have a hockey the greatest Hall weekend we're on for forty five minutes and talk <laughs> where almost no golf. I will say I we only had three mics despite being a podcast during that Jeremy Roenick interview. And I, I just handed the mic to the three hockey guys and I just sat there and looked at him for the first 45 minutes of the interview until I grabbed the mic and said something because I, I Jeremy Roenick is a guy that I know through his media appearances. Like that's how I know who he is. I remember he used to go on the Dan Patrick show all the time and they would punch him in the face. That's how I know Jeremy Roenick. And then he's obviously to you guys, he's a much bigger deal. So I sort of sat that interview out, but what I'm saying is that we just had the greatest weekend of NFL playoff football that we've ever seen, and it was truly, truly unbelievable. I know we don't say that on this show, but there's no other way to describe what we witnessed this weekend, and especially last night, was just not to be believed. Yeah, it was. Um, it's not recency bias either. I saw a lot of people on Twitter trying to say if it's recency bias, if it's not. It's just flat like, I out. I don't know how you can have better games. It's just That's flat the out thing. the yeah. best the best playoff weekend you can possibly have every single game ended on a buzzer beater. If you think about it, just the best three of the games finished with a game winning field goal. And then the fourth game finished with maybe the best game ever played touchdown in overtime. I know a lot of people have takes lurch was doing his lurch things on Twitter, um, talking about the overtime and yeah, I mean, he I just think called they, himself Josh Allen. I mean, that was, <laughs> yeah, I am Josh Allen. If I'm well, everybody was just like Josh Allen. I was like, if I'm going to be a quarterback, I'll be Josh Allen. In, <laughs> and in, thought, in what way? I thought that was pretty funny. I in mean, in way? no, in no way possible. I'm sitting there sore as hell from playing a game called paddle tennis. I can't <laughs> move. Obviously, that's not connected through the tweet. But like, in no way am I Josh Allen. So I just, I don't know. In my own head, it was funny, and maybe it didn't land as in mm. others' minds as well as it did in mine. But I thought it'd be, I thought it was funny. So. Um, no, but I think the games were absolutely well, here's incredible. What it, the only thing just, that I think the, the, just the it just said if I was a QB, I would be Josh Allen. <laughs> and you so and Lurch knows that it, it it's not going to hit because he even said he's like I'm sore from paddle tennis, but people don't know that that's not going to connect. So people just think that you're calling yourself Josh Allen, and they're like, correct. why? Correct. Correct. Well, it's you There's know it's just a context. fantasy world. Obviously, I'm not Josh Allen in no way, shape, or form. We don't. But if hey, if I was gonna become a quarterback, I'd like maybe I should add added the word like to be in there. But I think taking it away is better. I'd be I, Josh Allen. The I way think, you framed it was like, hey, obviously, if I was a QB, the best person you could compare me to would be Josh right. Allen. Right, right. and that's good. That's a good takeaway. He's so good that it's so good. it's hard Shit. it's hard for me to wrap my brain around. And Mahomes is obviously like just as good, probably. You know, they're they're neck and neck for the best quarterbacks in the league. Dude, I was gonna but say I honestly, he's so good. I think Mahomes might be better. He probably he might Mahomes be. Is- he's Shit. certainly more experienced, and he, I mean, he's got a ring. Like I get that. It's it's hard. You're you're arguing about the best right. of the best, but it just feels like if Josh Allen wanted to, he could throw a football three hundred yards. The, on a on a string, yeah. He he's, just has a cannon, and I agree. Mahomes is just as good. You're, and that's what made that game so truck. great. The way Allen just like they're just design run plays, but then he's 
wildly athletic. Like that guy was making plays at the end that he had no business making. It was incredible. But then you'll the watch Mahomes point... too. Mahomes will be dropped back in the pocket and he'll have yeah. somebody coming from his blind side and he'll step forward, see it at the last second and step back and the defender will fly right by him. That is, He's so that shifty. is just so impossible shifty. to comprehend and the way he does things like what's that. What's crazy to me is we met Josh Allen at the same time that we met Sam Darnold. We did pizza reviews with them prior to the draft. So, you know, Josh Allen, there was all this huge campaign. Josh Allen is tall on part of my take. And there was all draft this, Josh this Allen. draft Josh Allen.com they had. And there was all this talk about this guy's going to be the real deal. And it was almost like a joke that because he's tall and because he has big hands and because he throws the ball really far, he's going to be an amazing draft pick. Whenever part of my take takes that up, you don't know if it's like sarcastic or if it's real. And we met him during the pizza review. And I remember texting my buddies and my buddies reminded me of this in our group chat last night saying, remember like five years ago, whatever it was, whenever he got drafted four years ago, that you guys, that Frankie texted us and said, I hope the jets don't draft this guy. Cause he has like rocks for a brain. He was just a, he was like a, he came with his parents and his girlfriend to the pizza review, and he was so nice. And I'm like, how is this guy going to be an NFL quarterback? It's almost the same when you look at Zach Wilson. Like, how is that guy going to go out there and lead a team, which he evidently did not. Um, <laughs> but there was just something about, I guess, just he was so young and he wasn't drafted yet. And I was like, is this I guy mean, he's have from it? Wyoming, right? He Wyoming. played in Wyoming, so it's like he was so you know, polite, boy. and it was just yeah. like, hi, Mr. Portnoy and Mr. Borelli, like, thank you, like. I was just like, is this guy dumb? Or like, <laughs> you know, I didn't know. And being able to watch him and how much he's fucking taken over this league, he is a, he's a, he is a killer now. The look he has on the sidelines and the way he screams. Oh, it's crazy. And he's fucking psychotic, and he's he's like another huge. He's like a he's like a robot, like a like a raged robot. Like he, well, he I, I'm, he's not he's not who he used to be. He's like he's this man now. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> Well, and, and Dave made a video last night, and he was right. Like, as excruciating as that loss was, and it doesn't get – you can't get your heart ripped out more than that. Like, no. that type of game, overtime. Josh Allen doesn't even get to touch the ball in overtime because of the NFL That rules. was my biggest problem. Yeah, no, I, people can go back and forth on that. But, there's, like, there's 13 an argument to be made. seconds, dude. They just needed to, yeah. like – they just needed to not let him get 40 yards in 13 seconds. Right. Right. So, my, my quick but, point – all right, you go, T, and then well, I'll Well, I was just going to say, but as as bad as last night hurts and, is, and it doesn't get much worse, you can lean on and fall back on and think, we have Josh Allen for the next 15 years. And that is, you are going to be successful at some point as long as you just, you're, you don't fuck it up. And I don't think a guy like Josh Allen can really fuck it up. He's that good. So Generational last tough, talent. Absolutely. Both those guys. And so last night, as much as it hurts, you got such a bright future and Dave also said, you're not the New York Jets, which they're not. Like, you are just – everything is so much brighter than that. Like, take solace in that despite waking up this morning and being like, man, I can't believe we lost that game like that. You got Josh Allen. It's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like the NFC quarterbacks used to be awesome. Like, that was a gauntlet to go through in the last, I don't know, from last year for the last 10 years, honestly. But now the AFC quarterbacks are just – outrageous like that is going to be so brutal to get out of the AFC no but my my point on the like the NFL has made the league a quarterback league like it's pass heavy it rewards quarterbacks and just the OT like not to allow those quarterbacks to go back to back because NFL is an entertainment business and I just think that 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 just needs to be changed I mean everybody would have been on the edge of their seat talking NFL for another I don't know, could have been hours, could have been till now until one defense had to stop those guys. And I understand 13 seconds, you know, you could have stopped them there, but... Squib it, maybe. Right, or something, right? Like, there's maybe, you know, you can play other ways to win the game. However, the way the league is with regards to, like, what they're trying to make it, I think that you can't take that out of the quarterback's hands in overtime. Like, that should just keep going in my Look, mind. I... I I agree with you. I, obviously, I think everybody wanted to see like more just QB versus QB stuff last night. I had a bunch of money on the uh, Bills responsibly, so like I couldn't agree with you more. But I would also argue those have been the rules. People know that. The teams know that. And if you can't stop them from scoring a touchdown, then by stats, you're going to lose. Like you have to at, at any point, right? If they could just 
if they get the ball and that means they're automatically going to score a touchdown, you will lose the game. Like you can't, yeah. you have to no, be able to stop well, them on and some also, level. And so I understand that like in overtime, it sucked, it sucked that the bills that obviously Josh Allen, everybody wanted to see QB versus QB. It's really stupid. But like if your team, if you're instantly like, Oh, it was a coin flip. And they, we knew they were just going to score a touchdown. Well, then you can't win a football game if they're going to score a well, touchdown every time. And also, people were bringing up the fact that a few years ago when it was Patch Chiefs, the same thing happened to the Chiefs, and right. they lobbied for the rules to change, change, and they got voted down. So it's like, you know, they, they wanted it changed as well when it happened to them, and it just didn't happen. And KFC made a great point. the Players Association saying that, like, injuries and, like, you know, the percentage of the, how long the game goes, you're more apt to get injured. KFC made a great it. point that – um if the Bills had just got, won the coin toss and went down and scored a touchdown, majority of the takeaway would be that was the best game of all time. Amazing win. Josh Allen's amazing. We would not be talking about the overtime rules just because the Bills are a super likable, amazing franchise yeah. with a really fun fan base. And, like, the unlikable team just happened to win. And the really likable quarterback sitting on the bench, like, the, 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 the shots of him sitting there not touching the ball and being – like kind of just stunned Cold, standing there. Like, like that yeah. kind of added to us being like, well, how does that guy not play? Meanwhile, if it was Mahomes, he just would have walked off the field and the game would have been over and that's it. All yeah, of this, maybe, all, but... all, of what, all of what we're talking about just comes to one point and it's that football is king. And Matt, Max it Homa is. tweeted about this. He was like, how, how are we as the game of golf supposed to compete with anything like, anything like this? Like how is any other sport – supposed to compete with this type of entertainment because when football is good, when NFL football is good, there's just nothing better. There really is nothing better. Last night was it's, so much fun. It's the suspense. Like the just the format of the game creates such suspenseful and intense moments. And I remember there's actually a clip in the show The West Wing. And it was I can't remember who the actor was, but it's like the vice president at the time and they're talking about going to the Washington Capitals hockey game. And he's asking whoever he's with, it's an aide or something. And he's like, um, oh, are you into hockey? And they're like, oh, you know, I kind of like this. And he goes, you know, I, I want to like hockey, but I just can't get that into it because it just feels so chaotic. He's like, they're talking like, oh, yeah, this guy's from Nova Scotia. Oh, they score. And it's and football doesn't have that. Football is like it builds up to it. It's like you build up to a huge second down, then a, a bigger third down, and then a fourth down. Like, think of how many times last night Josh Allen and the Bills, like, converted on fourth down. In those moments, you have 30, 40 seconds to build up. It's like Frankie with the Islanders clip where ever, the whole uh, Borellis went silent for uh, two seconds on that breakaway, and then they scored. Like, that suspense in football, just because the format of the game, like, delivers again and again and again. And you just get to prepare for something that's going to be really important. And it's fucking awesome. And Homa's right. Like, you can't compete with that. Like, football is fucking king in this country. Yeah. The only thing that compares is Tiger Woods coming down, like, the 18th. And every swing he makes, like, he has to make a birdie. And every swing <laughs> he makes is is basically a fourth and 10 in football where you're just like, this guy yeah. has to hit the fairway, has okay. to hit the green and has to make the putt. That's the only thing that could ever compare, but shout out to Andy Reed too, for somehow having three timeouts with 13 seconds left in the biggest game of the season. I just don't I know how that's that. possible. Dude, when I just, looked at the graphic and they just had three of the little lights next to it, I was like, what? for a guy that's gotten that's killed three. his whole career for time management. And like, that was one of the biggest knocks on him. His whole time, his whole time as a coach is like, he just doesn't know how to do any clock management at all. The fact that he saved all three timeouts for a 13 second fucking drive is psychotic. How about that quote he gave after the game? What did you see say? that? Oh he's, yeah, I did. When he's talking, he's talking about like, what do you do when things look grim? And he said, when it's grim, be the grim reaper. Woo! It's good. Sheesh. That's what a good. When things are grim, be the grim reaper. Yeah, Woo! Uh, it was really fun. It, the two minute drill, like the two minute drills, out right. Like they can just score touchdowns now in thirteen seconds or kick field goals in thirteen. Two minutes is. Are you kidding me with how long two minutes is? I just didn't That's understand. Why there was like the there Bills. was seventeen points in what the last minute and a half or something. Twenty-five. Right. Like, two 25 minute drills out. That is in out. The last I, it's like minute and forty-five seconds. Well, that goes to my point, Riggs, of like, OT, just you have to give the other quarterback a chance. Like, if they're scoring that, it was a track meet. Yeah. Tyreek Hill is the fastest human being I've ever seen. On the planet. On, on the shot planet. Shot on the planet. Like, they just shot, like, I didn't <laughs> know you could crazy. shoot somebody out of a cannon to down you, the field. Like, that's not allowed. You're, 
when you, when you are watching him run by guys on yeah. an NFL field, he is running by the fastest, most talented people in the world. Right. That want to blowing kill him. by. They have a peace sign to him. Like, see you later. And then they like all they're know not it too. even you're looking moving. at ten. Yeah, you're looking at that guy, and you're like, "There's no way I'm just stop running." I mean, he's so fast, and he's so agile. It's not to be believed that that's inside of a human body. I mean, it, it's preposterous the way he moves. It was yeah, that game was ex- it was awesome. honestly the probably the best football game I maybe like I'm a Giants guy, so the Super Bowls were, but that that was just that was incredible. Absolutely incredible games. I'll say too, shout out to the Barstool Sportsbook. Like my buddies and I, that was the only game all weekend where we were on different sides of it. And I just, all day, I was like, I was like, just don't understand how good the Bills are. And they're like, dude, we're hard on the Chiefs. So you have to go Bills. So it was the only game. We had two of us on the Chiefs, two of us on the Bills. And the last 10 minutes of that, like actually a minute and a half of the actual game, but like 10, 15 minutes of us watching time was the most fun electric back and forth like two guys would be depressed sitting there like came and like those two guys with a minute and a half left still had two touchdowns to look forward to in the game and we're going nuts and chirping like it made that game for us the most memorable watching experience because we were just on two different sides you have a little skin in the game um it was awesome it was just awesome it was so much fun to watch and i was on the losing side of it it's the divisional yeah, it was, round it was divisional not round. i mean the crazy thing is about the AFC, though, like, those teams aren't going anywhere for the next 10, 12 years. I mean, it's crazy. Mahomes um, isn't good. Allen's 25, Mahomes is 26. Get out of here. One of my yeah. buddies texted me like That's we could have had Allen. I guess maybe it was the year we drafted Saquon Barkley. I mean, the Giants are just one of – I mean, toss up between them and their Jets for just the worst franchise. Um and that that hurts. Looking back, obviously. Yeah, one of my friend, my friend texted us and goes, uh, "We all just watched that game. Now imagine the Jets and the Giants playing that game." <laughs> oh no 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 no! <laughs> just imagine Turn it off those wide receivers trying minutes. to make those plays. Our quarterbacks, like Jones and Zach Wilson, trying to maneuver their way. Even those defenses rushing the quarterback like that, and just we have no talent in New York at all. We have like Galloway is the best wide receiver for the Jets. I don't like how is that even possible? We don't have anyone put, like a Tyreek Hill. Yeah, no, you could put that whole Chiefs team in a Jets uniform and that whole Bills team in a Giants uniform, and the game would just be substantially worse for whatever yeah. reason. It just we they're just horrible at football. But no, if they were, if that was Jets Giants football, it's like seven three finish, and nobody wants to watch. But that's why that goes more to your point where you say like, all right, the end of that game had twenty five points. How do they not have a better overtime? Like most games in reality aren't like that. So you, usually scoring a touchdown in one drive is a massive overhaul and like an amazing, an amazing accomplishment. In that game, it was yeah. kind of just like sneezed at because touchdowns were coming at every second. So it, it's hard yeah, but to. That- that's the pinnacle. That's the playoffs. And if, in order to be in the playoffs, you have to have a great quarterback. I mean, we're looking at Stafford, Brady, you know, um, Mahomes. And it, it's Burrow. just like, right. It's just every, so in that level, like those, it's such a quarterback driven league that they do get more touchdowns than, you know, what we're looking at. Daniel Jones and Zach Wilson, they might've had 15 touchdown passes all year. They're horrible at the yeah. position <laughs> and the team is horrible. So, like, if you're going to get to that playoff atmosphere, sure, in the regular season, just wrap it up. And, like, over time, someone which is, when it's a touchdown, done. But in the playoffs, like, I just think you have to – if you're going to pay these guys 20 and $25 million a year and that is, the like, the apex position of the football field, you need that to go into overtime and continue to, like, reward them with a chance to do it. Um, in my opinion, I mean, it was amazing. It's an entertainment game, but like, I, I wish that I just did. I also just from a human level did not want the game to stop. Right. I know. I agree with you. I, I agree with you for sure. I think they'll probably change it at some point. And especially because, you know, I think the best point was that they have catered to it being a scoring offensive quarterback league. Right. So like, it makes sense right. to change the way they do the overtime to, allow that to be showcased and rewarded because that's how the league is going. Yeah. Thank you for accepting one of my, one of my fantastic points. Still got to make it stop. I just don't, 
rare. <laughs> never should have let the chief. They never should have let the Chiefs go down. No, sixty yards in thirteen seconds. I mean, they played a prevent defense and not get crushed like deep. But you ha- you can't keep letting those guys come up the middle on two plays. I mean, it was just psychotic. Allowing those two fucking passes to be completed. Whoever their defensive coordinator is for the Bills, I think is interviewing for a bunch of head coaching jobs. And I saw somebody tweet out like, all head coaching jobs for this person is just rescinded. Like, there's no way he can be a head coach if you're just going to let that happen. I just don't don't know why you change your game plan that much. Like, I understand you don't want to get crushed by these really, really fast wide receivers on the outside. But you have to play a little bit tighter. Yeah. Because he's just he has two timeouts and he's just gonna complete two thirty yard passes and you're gonna fucking lose. It's as simple as that. I also don't know how um, kickers don't just puke all over the field. Oh my every god! Time. Sometimes they do. Oh, Butker, sometimes they do. Sometimes they, sometimes do. they do. Like, Talk Butker to the hit, he missed year. that fifty yard earlier in the game and he missed that PAT and then he's got to go back out there oh. to kick a forty nine yard mass. Like Mahomes has done the heavy lifting. He's Patrick Mahomes and he did it. Now he's depending on you to go out there and make this kick. I know that they're professionals. They've been doing it their whole lives. But if that's me, not only do I throw up everywhere, but that ball hits the back of my lineman and in the ass. And I just run away and run off the field and and disappear. We're not even talking about Tom Brady's game. Like there was a point where it was 27 to three in the third quarter. And we said, there's no way that he could possibly do this again. You're putting yourself in a situation saying there's no way Tom Brady can do the 28 to three against the Falcons again right now. He's no chance. He doesn't have like the, the Belichick, the whole thing. He doesn't have the, the magic and he did it. He came all the way back. I mean, obviously yeah. crazy stuff was happening. Like extraterrestrial Fumbles. stuff was happening to the Rams. I don't know what happened. I think just them being in the presence of Tom Brady happened, but I think that's part of it. That game was fucking tied and he did it. He came all the way back. Fumbles just, touchdowns amazing throw to fucking Evans it was insane what was happening in that game and we were actively saying is he doing what we think he's doing I had a moment where I was like I'm watching the greatest quarterback of all time in a divisional playoff game actively do one of the greatest comebacks of all time I kept telling myself that and he as he was completing passes and and throwing touchdowns I'm like it's happening right now we're watching what we're gonna watch forever on highlight reels we're watching it right now this next throw will be on a highlight reel and then he threw a bomb to fucking evans it was like i felt like i was in another planet i was i was i was outside of my body i said like right now this next highlight will be a highlight forever and then he threw it to evans and it was a fucking it, it was fucking nuts and they lost and they lost then they lost um all right jeremy ronick's coming up hall of famer we're talking all kinds of sports football how cool it is this guy's done it he's done it all um he's a legend he's Incredibly candid, raw, real. He's got great stories. Um, so stick around, JR, for almost a full hour. Um, real quick, after answering just a couple questions, Wealthfront, okay? Wealthfront will build you a diversified portfolio of low-cost index funds in just minutes. You can also build your own portfolio with clean energy funds, crypto trust, cannabis tech, hundreds of other investments. If you are like us and you don't know a ton about this stuff, Wealth front again, it's a it's a more and more, 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 more reasons to get involved, utilize wealth front, um, to start building your wealth and get your first five thousand dollars managed for free for life. Just go to wealthfront.com slash four. That is W E A L T H F R O N T dot com slash four to start building your wealth. Wealthfront.com slash four. Get started today. Um, they're trusted with over twenty-seven billion dollars in assets. That's with a B. Mm. That's a huge number. That's just a really big number. A really big number. Helping nearly half a million people build their wealth. Wow! Get your first five thousand dollars managed for free. Wow is right for life by going to wealthfront.com/slash/four. Here is Jeremy Roney. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're joined by a very special guest, uh, NHL Hall of Famer, Jeremy Roenick. I will say on this show, it's a golf podcast, but we talk hockey. Well, also, also, my also my first um, time on bar- Barstool since I got fired. So I'm Welcome back. Jumping right into it. So, yeah, it's good we're, to have you back. Yeah, so we're, what is it, two, been two years? Has so? it been two full years? It's been two years. Yeah, yes. actually, actually, two years almost to the day. So... The fact of me being here now, two years afterwards, is it's it's fitting. It's, it's special. a special time. It's special. Yeah, well, right. especially because it's barstool, right? Mm-hmm. So if you, if if you want to 
if you want to talk and talk the way you really want to talk, it's probably a good place to be. This is the spot. This is what this we is, do. This is the spot. How has life yeah. been in the last two years? Amazing. You should go into golf tournaments. Um, like I actually this? grew up as as a as a man, right? So it's like I had time to be at home. I'm not traveling. I played golf. I was became like the best husband of all time, no question. Um, uh, <laughs> of all time. A little pat on the back there. Just yeah, it's go, okay. Yeah, it's okay. I, I'm gonna pat myself on the back. Trust me, there's a lot of times where I was not. So <laughs> it's nice to know that um, you know my wife loves me very very much, especially when I've been home in COVID, and I've had my son home for two two years. So. Yeah, life has been good. I like it. It, it. The further the further away from sports I can get, probably the happier I'm going to be. They've been like sick of you at home at all yet? No, not at all. Good, not at all. I'm 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 really good at, at keeping people's attention at home. <laughs> How's your golf wife, game? My wife getting... is my wife is she loves she loves having me home. <laughs> yeah. Your golf game getting better? By the way, it's just me and my wife, by the way, at home together. Nobody else, just the two of us. So it's good. <laughs> yeah. The way it's well, supposed to be. Yeah. Um you go, are you getting better at golf, worse? Um, I'm actually getting better at golf because I've um, I've been able to realize that I'm not, not going to hit the farthest ball. I'm not going to be the biggest, strongest guy. But if I just outthink somebody, it's going to be really good. So, um, like I said, I've grown up a lot over the last two years. <laughs> and I don't have to be the furthest guy in the fairway. I just have to be the first guy in the hole. So, that's I like that. Yeah, it's a whole new perspective. Whole new perspective, right? Did you like think that. that way when you played hockey, or has golf kind of made you think no, more? I, what, no, when I played hockey, I wanted to knock somebody out right. and then score a goal, <laughs> right? So it was like in, in order. So it's like you hit somebody really hard, get into the game, you know, or you get hit, and then go score a goal. Because it's 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 so much cooler scoring a goal when you have blood dripping down your face <laughs> than it is if if you don't. It's funny to see how much golf has changed. Where now, is, uh, in all sports, is analytical now, and they yeah. try and maneuver their ways around the golf course, and you know you minimize your mistakes. And have you seen that hockey's made the same sort of change, or is it still more just like run and gun feel type of game? I, you know, it, I think that's a that's a slippery slope for me to, to answer a question like that because. Uh, hockey is a physical sport, and uh, there are a lot of guys in, in the physical sport of hockey that don't want to get hit right. and will will play their game to where they are going to be protective, they are going to be a little bit more cognizant of when they're going to get their head knocked off, right? I loved getting my head knocked off. We, wouldn't, we didn't even consider that in the early 90s. Nowadays, you consider getting hit hard and... There's a there's a different kind of mentality uh, now, whereas golf is, I just think it's golf is one of those intimidating sports because there's so many guys that are unbelievable, and no matter how good you are, there's probably two or three hundred thousand players that are better than you, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and it's just that that's that's a frustrating thing for golf. In hockey, I could I can get my frustrations out by punching somebody in the mouth. In <laughs> golf. There's, it's just you, you, you and your anger. Period. There's so, nothing else. Right. At a certain level in hockey, you can just dump and chase and just pounce somebody yeah. in the boards. And it's like, yeah. okay, don't have the touch today. You know, whatever. Yeah. Let's go run this guy in the corner. Correct. But in golf, it's just you want to run yourself in some cases. Hundred you know? percent. If I'm not having a good game offensively in hockey, I can drop my gloves and pound somebody. <laughs> right. <laughs> you get into a fight, and then then that's a that's a good motivating feed feedback to your team. Mm -hmm. Right. So. What better sport can you can you play 100%. when you get really mad? You can actually punch somebody in the face, <laughs> and, and it's fine. Everyone's and, like, it's and, part and of yeah. the game. Oh yeah. yeah, go go to the box for five minutes, yeah. and then you're free. Just calm down. Yeah, you're free. <laughs> five you minutes for play. fighting. Yeah, five right minutes for fighting. There. You're free. You ever tried that on the golf course? DVD. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I just I just have to say I'm not I'm. Not, there's been a couple memberships that have been kind of revoked for me for certain reasons yeah <laughs> yeah did you really just peg that at the flag yeah. sir just grabs it just, just. <laughs> yeah there's, would you yeah. fucking knock it off yeah <laughs> there's been many broken things in the golf course with me over the years but like i said after after the last two years i've kind of grown up a little bit i'm kind of more in a realm where i i i, I love my life i enjoy it but uh, i still have a little competitiveness that will come out every once in a while yeah it's in your dna yeah for so sure. I, we we grew up i'm a st louis guy st louis blues fan we had mm. season tickets growing up so man you were just our worst fucking enemy for the first 15 years Bro, of my i lost life. my teeth in fuck in, in the, in the <laughs> st louis arena my first playoff game my teeth got shattered all over the place from glenn featherstone so 
yeah, I fucking hated St. Louis because yeah. of that. It was just one of those things. Every time I went back into St. Louis, all I felt was there's going to be pain because, I, you know, you lose your teeth in the first, like your first time you ever lose your teeth. I pray to you guys Not never to lose your teeth. No. It's the worst, worst injury you can possibly get. And I did it in St. Louis. So forever, forever going in there, it was like, just painful men memories. Your teeth look great now, though. I will say. Yeah, modern dentistry is a beautiful thing. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you I lose? Really, them? I have a really good, really good insurance plan. <laughs> How'd you lose them? What happened? The Glenn Featherstone cross-checked me in the face, right, <laughs> you know, right to my mouth, and he's like six four, and I was six foot. So even if he went to try to hit me in the chest, it still hit me in the mouth, right? And do you think it's crazy like that? Like it's an insane gesture. Do you think it's crazy when people are just like, oh yeah, old time hockey, and they like laugh it off? I love old time yeah, hockey. All right, I love it. I love old time hockey. I, I will say this: the, the players today are faster, better, ta more talented, shoot the puck harder, um, and I think uh, put the, the best word I can. They're they're. They're pussies compared to what we played, how we yeah. played. Like, 100% pussies. We, we played a game hard. We played a game where you had to defend yourself. You had to live, live up to your, the game that you played. And you, if somebody wanted to fight you, you had to fight. Nowadays, you don't have to worry about that. You totally. guys can run around and... and I mean, it's not, I don't think it's just hockey. It's, that's in all sports. Like, I'm not a basketball. We're... The two or three of us are really all hockey guys. Not so much T, but I'm a Rangers yeah. fan. Frankie's an Islanders fan. Um... And I'm not a basketball guy by any means, but even back in the 90s, like I could watch that game with yeah. Ewing and those yeah. guys, and it was physical, and you felt the passion. They were playing defense. In your face. Basketball, yeah. I can't watch any of it now. Well, now basketball just wants to see how many points you can score. Right. No defense. Nothing. Fuck defense. It's a brutal game. Defense is gone. <laughs> it's, gone. it's just gone. It's awesome. similar in the NHL where you can't touch, you can't grab yeah. anybody, right? Like I remember like Darian yeah, Hatcher used touch. to just oh, grab yeah. and hack yeah. the fuck out of people. Yeah, you can't touch, you can't grab, you can't hook, you can't hold, you can't, right. you know. And, and granted, you know, g games change. People yeah. people change and sports change. But um, that still doesn't mean that we can't have an opinion about the sport, right? right? The players nowadays are the most talented of all time. But but they're not tough right. at all. They would get their ass fucking handed to them back in the 80s and 90s. I, I would say probably 50% of the players that play today uh, would get would get scared out of the National Hockey League back in the early 90s. Is that right? Sure. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's also a crazy blend, too, because some of that, you know, that quickness, like, you know, the Paul Koreas of the world that, mm -hmm. you know, would dance and move and get held, and it's beautiful now that they, you know, escape, but again, to like... Yeah, but look know, what happened to Paul Korea. What, with yeah. Scott Stevens? Stevens yeah. Hit? Totally. He, he comes back. across the middle, and Scott Stevens just knocks him... Put him like, in the Mars. So I've watched that Correct. clip hundreds of times. times. It is the most And he doesn't even remember scoring a goal afterwards. No. And he's But he, he only misses it like four or eight minutes of gameplay. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. His breath right came back, on the, back on, the, on his visor. Yeah, you see that? Yeah, just again? out of it. The breath. Right. You could yes. actually see his breath come back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. His visor got fogged up yep. when he was just... It was just a total... And But again, that's, that's what happens. Right. When the, you don't fear that as much anymore I no mean, you can no, go across, you, across the middle you, you can go across the middle anytime you want and, and probably you're gonna right. get away no with scott it. stevens there yeah no, remember no what he used to do to eric lindros and just bury Bro, him kill he, he crushed eric lindros career you know coming across the middle twice you know it's like um hey listen it's 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 a tough game it's a brutal game but we also need brutal men to play it to tell you the truth and it's just a little bit different now they're more talented but they're just not yeah, we had uh, your debate with Wayne Gretzky. Yeah. Oh, this is brutal. Frankie, why don't you We've gone back and forth a lot on it, but, I mean, Wayne o even had his quotes that sort of... There's a quote that Wayne Gretzky says, the style that he played and the era that he played, he doesn't know that he'd be able to play today. And I think that I made the argument that NHL has changed more than any other sport yeah. to the point where the best player of all time really wouldn't be able to compete in well, the style you gotta, of hockey. you got to remember this. Gretz is, Gretz is very humble. Okay, Gretz is going to say a lot of things that's going to take the attention away from him. Okay, don't don't ever believe th what he says is actually the tr is how he feels, because he's he's a humble person and he'll he said, oh, I hope I hope uh, Ovechkin breaks my goal record. No, he doesn't. Right. No, he doesn't. He doesn't want him to break his goal record. Nobody wants to get your records broken. Right. But I will tell you, um, Wayne Gretzky can play in the league today, but he he would be. 
he would be a 70, 80 point scorer because he wouldn't be able to score as many goals. He'd be a, a big, big time assist maker, right? right. Uh, only because the defense are faster, defense are stronger, goaltenders are bigger. Wayne Gretzky's not scoring 94 goals no. nowadays. No. He'd be lucky scoring 24, 25 these days. Right. But he'll get 78, 80 assists. Right. Right? Because he's the sm- he was the smartest player. Um, so. I mean, you look five at, seasons over 200 points. Like. Yeah, but yeah. those days are long gone. <laughs> right, right, right. So, like, right. it almost yeah, there's makes no, me... There's, there's no, there's no, there's no goaltenders that. that don't like to go down on the ice anymore, right? Like, they, they played when Gretz. Gretz scored 94 goals. He had, what, 25 empty netters, 30 empty netters, whatever the case may be. But goaltenders didn't want to go on the ice and drop down on the ice because then they had to stand up, so they stood up all the time. Goaltenders now are totally athletic. Wayne Gretzky probably... I would say if he scored 30 goals in the league right now, I'd be impressed. But I think he'd had 75 and 80 assists for sure because that's what he did. Yeah. That was the best. How, how different do you think the sort of um, full-on kind of athlete, nutrition, um, working out, off ice, mm. having it kind of dominate your entire life, how different is that now from your guys' time? I mean, were you guys partying in between games? <laughs> Well, I made I made I made ninety thousand dollars in my first contract. You think I give a shit what I ate? <laughs> you think I gave a shit what I drank no. at ninety five thousand bucks? It was like that's what we did to work to um, during training camp, scrimmage for an hour and a half and drink for six hours. That's what we did. So nowadays it's like it's all power shakes and you know power bars and everything is is make sure that your body is fit. I didn't see an ab on a hockey player until I was 26 years old. Not an ab. <laughs> nope. Who was the first ab. one? <laughs> nope. Swear to God, if you, if you have somebody try to do, do 25 push-ups, they'd puke. <laughs> it just didn't happen. Yeah. Nowadays, it's like these guys are just shredded, but yeah. they were they were born and raised to be professional athletes since yeah. they were six or seven years old. We didn't... If, if I could have told you what my our camp was consisted of in 1988, you'd laugh. You'd laugh. You, you, you guys could do it with me in 10 minutes. Just... Go out, play, do you know, 25 push-ups, 50 sit-ups, do a little bike work, and then go to the bar. That's it. <laughs> Perfect. It was awesome. I remember was we had uh, Mark Messier came and gave our team a little speech one year, and we were grilling him with a couple of questions about yeah. you know Gretzky and his younger years in the Oilers. And he said, yeah, the best thing that we ever taught Gretzky was how to just live. And he's like, his first year, he was so 100% hockey. It was all he hockey. Was tight. And he was Yeah, and then he said he yeah. came in, and we taught him how to, like, enjoy it and go out and they're like and it made him the best person he'll ever be i i heard the uh the middle 80s edmonton oilers were fun they were fun sure. can imagine and yari curry yep. kevin lowe mark messier glenn anderson was glenn anderson yeah. those guys taught Beauties. gretz how to have fun now i don't know what kind of fun gretz had but let me tell you he definitely had fun and you're coming right off the heels of, I'm going to plug the Islanders, but four yeah. Stanley Cups in a row. That team was nasty, too, and they, they were, were a, oh, yeah. a tight Islanders group crazy. also. Well, it's, it's kind of crazy because the, the Tampa has a chance to be the first team to win three in a row since that. Yep. Um, you know, that, that was a dynasty. I mean, the Islanders of the late 70s, early 80s was pretty unbelievable. And uh, it would be nice. It would be really cool to see another team dominate like that. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna happen. But it's killing me because they keep yeah. killing my Islanders in the fucking playoffs. Well, everybody kills your Islanders. <laughs> Sorry. Give it to him. Give it to him. Don't you like the style that the Islanders play though? No, it's fucking terrible. Why? You think it's boring? It's you, terrible. You why it's is that? Terrible. Why is that terrible? Barstool Sports now have our own bathroom products, uh, home grooming. We got body wash. We got shampoo, conditioner, shaving cream. I use. I don't use shampoo because I'm a bald person. I use a shaving cream to uh, shave my head. It's yeah, really I use nice, it every. Actually. I use it every day. I have the body wash. I have it in my shower right now. I use it every morning. I also I sometimes I have the shampoo as well. Sometimes I use it. Sometimes I don't. I don't know what the like the science behind putting shampoo in, in hair like mine. Like, is it worth it? Is it not? Some days I do. Some days I don't. But I use the body wash every day. I wash my body with wood every single day. It's great, man. The smells are great. They got a bunch of different smells. Barstool's just taking over the world, and this is the new avenue, grooming products, men's grooming products, and it's top-of-the-line stuff. And I think you can get it you can get it at uh, store.barstoolsports.com and CVS. I think they're like 15 bucks, but they are real quality grooming products. There's like a famous guy in this industry that that 
created these products with us. I can't remember the guy's name, but he's like, this is what he does. He's really well known for it. We used and consulted with him. We're like, let's make the best products. Um, men's kind of, um, you know, grooming, making yourself prettier, better, healthier, smell nicer, cleaner, all that. Partner with him, Barstool Sports. Um, and all of a sudden we have all these amazing products. And again, it's called Wood. Um, and it's just great. Shop Wood at getwood.com or at your local CVS. I'm sure you go to CVS. I go to CVS all the time. All the time. I'm there all the time. I well, got one CVS. under my building. What do you, you like CVS, that, Ricky? I love CVS. CVS is incredible. They got everything there. They have wood there. Yeah. W O W O U L D. Yep. That's correct. They also have um, um, they also have those gummy those gummy clusters that you told me oh. I got those when I was buying some stuff. But Woo. we don't have to, we won't talk about that right now. Wood is what we're talking about. We'll talk about nerds gummy clusters at a later date. Wood is what we want to talk about. Right Something now. about lathering yourself up with just a good smelling gel you know like a gelatin that comes out of that bottle and you just rub it all over we're long past the bars of soap we it's the year 2022 all yep products are 15 dollars and less all products sulfate free uh so again go check out getwood.com or go to your local cvs we love cvs it's get cal terrible. clutterbucks matt martins ross johnson's these guys they're clanging and banging opening up some space awesome for it's great love it we love it he's you guys will never make the playoffs, and then, <laughs> then they'll. It's just it's brutal hockey. Well, and and by the way, I, like I, all, I will tell you, you don't they like have, all the skill. They have the, the smartest g- hockey mind on the planet with Lou Lamorello behind. But um, and I think I think Matthew Barzal is one of the most exciting players in the National Hockey League. But <laughs> the, the the most fucking. Bo- they almost have like New Jersey Devils of the of yeah. the mid '90s kind of mentality, right? Why is that wrong though? You know, they're they're a glimpse of hope in this uh, Dude, sometimes soft. I'd, sometimes I'd rather, rather watch monkeys fuck than <laughs> come on. You're than killing than me right now. Dry, you're fucking hockey. killing me right now. This is just my favorite segment. Bro, why is it boring hockey to be one goal away from the Stanley Cup Finals? Yeah, but why is it? Why is it, why is it not? Why is it not the Rangers? Since why is it not a boring <laughs> hockey game when you get one goal? You said one goal from a Stanley Cup, but when you go to a game, you get one goal. That's not true, though. They scored goals in the playoffs. The Matt Barzells, the Brock Nelsons, the Anders Lees. I'm not going to. I'm not going to let you diminish this team. They are a very good, skilled team. I thought you would enjoy the the type of hockey they play. No. They go out there no. and they say no. we're going to fucking <laughs> stop everything you throw at us. Yeah, no. And we're going to be know. systematic and we're going to pound you into the fucking ground with no. Cal Clutterbuck and Matt Martin leading the league in hits constantly their whole entire careers. These guys just keep going in there into the dirty areas and they yeah. fucking send the fourth they, they line go, out there with a minute dirty left. As, uh, dirty areas all they want. It's Come great. on. Who's your favorite team to watch? Tampa. Tampa. Colorado. Yeah. Those, 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 those teams. Those boys are yeah, insane. Those teams that can, that can throw some offense in. Um, yeah, I hate defense. Yeah. I, 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 hated, I hated playing New Jersey Devils in the mid-90s. Yep. Oh. They crushed hockey. They killed hockey, literally. <laughs> they changed every, every rule that you can possibly imagine offensively with the league because of the way that they played. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm a big Islanders fan. Don't worry. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. But if if I'm gonna go, if I'm gonna pay two hundred and fifty dollars for a ticket, it's Islanders will probably be my like twenty to thirty. I'm gonna, dis- I'm gonna respectfully disagree with you. Um, Obviously, you are. Yeah, I will. <laughs> Who would you say in the league right now do you see as most similar to your game? Do you find it like Nobody. one specific? Not one specific guy. Yeah. You're like that guy is me. Nope. Wow. No. Because uh, I'll ask you. Somebody, and I've been asked this question before. So. Who who in the game today wants to go out and knock somebody's head off every shift? Every shift will be physical, hit somebody really hard. Um, who scores goals, scores assists, is will fight, will fight. I had over forty fights in my career. But who who is going to go out there and be so? Like I've got one. I would say like earlier Ovechkin, but he didn't really fight. But he would go and he would get into you think it. Ovechkin the court. was he a better playmaker people? than me. I think not a chance. No, I'm not saying that. But I'm no, saying but that's somebody what I'm who saying. was offensively no, talented the, who see, also but, would run into people. No, but this yeah. is the, this is the thing. If you take all the intangibles, right? Yeah. Playmaking, defense, offense, physicality. There was a time when when Alex Ovechkin was the worst defensive player on the history of the game. Oh, yeah, true. He was true. minus thirty six. <laughs> he was minus thirty six. It's and true. then, and he's like leading the league and, in goals, and he's the, the the greatest power play goal scorer of all time. Yeah. Okay. So, is Alex close to me in 
relation to how I played, yeah, he's physical. But he doesn't play physical like I played physical. Yeah. He'll hit somebody every once in a while. I hit somebody every fucking shift. Yeah. I hit somebody hard every fucking shift. You almost got to combine a Brad Marchand and a Tom Wilson t- to get you. you know, I mean, I- I'll I'll accept a little bit of that. Yeah, for sure. Because Tom Wilson is a guy who'll hit every everybody in sight. He's those, got some those, skill, but he's not. I mean, those when, big, strong. That's like a, that's a, you know what? If you could combine those two players, because Brad Marchand, I think, is probably one of the most underrated oh, yeah. superstars in the league. Yeah, because yeah. I wanted to give him your comparison alone, but he doesn't do what you. Because he's a because he's a grind. He's a fucking. He's warrior. a scrappy. He hits talent. guys, but like, they bounce yeah. off him. But he'll go right back at and you and he'll snap at you. And yeah. he he likes when he gets cuts on his face. Do you chirp a lot out there? I chirped a lot. Mouth running nonstop. Yeah. You ever feel bad about anything you said out there? It's never stopped. You ever take it too far and you're like, fuck, sorry. I've never really taken it too far verbally. I've had I've had people that have taken it too far verbally. Rob Ray being one of them, who's a piece of shit, to tell you the truth. What do you say? It's just, it's... That's we know. Not coming out on this podcast. We know. It's not, yeah, it'll never come out. But Rob Ray knows he's a piece of shit to me. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. He so knows. That is gets there any, back to him. It's just like he's listening to the Four Play podcast, trying to get some golf stuff. Yeah. <laughs> is there anybody out there that you think says the same thing about you? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's more people that say it about me than I say about them. <laughs> there's no question about it. But you know what? I didn't want people to like me. You know. Yeah. No. I, I wanted my teammates to like me, but I don't. I could give two shits whether the play, people I'm playing against like me. I, I don't want that. Um, when you get booed going into a stadium, that's a, that's a, that's a. It's a win. That's a phenomenal feeling, mm-hmm. because if I went into a building and nobody acknowledged me, or I touched a puck, or they, then, You're then I didn't do anything. Right. At least, at least people know when I was there, and they know how I was there, and they know what I was there for. Because if I just went in there and I nobody paid attention from the day I walked in on the ice until I walked out, and there was nothing, what a fucking terrible life yeah. to be a part of as an athlete. You're irrelevant. Yeah. I like being relevant, whether you booed me or you cheered me. Would you get more fired up for some of those games even than oh, home yeah, games? For sure. Yeah. Um, I, I, I actually, going into Columbus at one time, there was a guy who put a sign up and that was like, you know, every time I came on the ice, he was, he had a sign he would put up on the, on the glass. Like, you know, old, old time men's hockey is at, at 8.30 down the street, you know, you're, you're an old has been, so on and so forth. So I remember going, getting ready for my la- one of my last games in Columbus, and I put, this guy was old too, he was like in the 70s, 80s. And I remember putting a, I wrote out on a piece of paper, and I clipped it, taped it to my chest, because I knew I was going to come out, and the guy was going to be there with some derogatory like sign for me. And he did. <laughs> so I skated right up to him, and I nobody saw that I had this picture, this thing, paper on my chest and I walked right I skated right up to him I stood right next to the glass <laughs> and it said I can't believe you're still alive <laughs> that was my that was my sign how I, long did you stand there I, looking I, at I stood there for five minutes <laughs> said, I, I can't believe you're still alive and he's looking at me like oh my god this guy is chirping me from the ice <laughs> so good now the great the best thing of it was after after warm-ups were in you know we go off the ice and he grabs one of our trainers and he writes his number down on his phone, on the piece of paper, says, give this to JR. He goes, I love that. Give this to JR. I ended up calling the guy and he ended up donating like 10 grand to my, to my favorite charity. No way. And we Amazing. became like buddies <laughs> because we chirped each other. <laughs> That's right? awesome. Because nowadays, if you chirp somebody, they, 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 Take they, it piss, so they piss themselves and cry and whine and go around and, you know, they, they want to sue you but like I, I chirped this 75 year old <laughs> and he ended up giving ten thousand dollars to my <laughs> best charity and we became friends yeah because I loved that he was chirping me right. and Two he loved that I chirped him back that's something you'll always remember right it's, you it's included him in the. He felt like he was a part yeah, of the team. Yeah, he's part of the yeah. team. Yeah. He's part, he part, right? yeah. part of the experience right he's part of the experience did you ever uh, have those kind of relationships with guys you get in fights with um, I mean, I fought a lot of guys that, that, that I, I mean, one of the, one of my best favorite fights of all time was with, um, Craig Berube, who became a good friend of mine. Right. Um, I fought, I just, I fought Bob Probert. I fought Marty McSorley. Marty McSorley is a great friend of mine. 
Uh, right? How did those he go? hit me in the forehead so hard one time I went blind for like five seconds. <laughs> sort of? couldn't, yeah, I couldn't see. Th- literally, like, picture being on the ice and see total black. It's like grabs, grab anything that you possibly can. How'd the Probert fight go? Not well. Yeah, he was uh, <laughs> well. he was his no. biggest. No, because him and Domi no, is it was, maybe it one was of the a, best it was fights a rag of all time. Doll, just a rag doll situation. But I'm throwing and I'm trying staying in there. And I was always of the case: if I woke up the next day, I'm good. If yeah. I woke up the next yeah. day, I'm okay. Whether it's with a broken jaw, or broken something, I'll get over that. But if you show up, a lot of guys today will be bitches and run around and, and they won't drop the gloves. They'll just yeah. chirp. They won't be accountable for the way they play. I liked being accountable for the way that I played. Yeah, and that also made you, I mean, imagine when you're chirping the shit out of people, made it come from a much more real place when they received it because they're like, this guy will stand in there with yeah, me and oh, fucking yeah. punch me. And, and, and by the way, that's, I mean, that was, that was a fun part of the game, right? Yeah. Is you right. knew who you can go after, who you can't. You know who is going to not give in. So, and that would made that that's what made fucking sports great back then because it was a battle mentally and a battle physically, literally. I knew going into St. Louis, I, my mental state was like, okay, just just get in there, get hit first. Once you get hit, then you're gonna get into the game because you knew it was gonna happen early. You knew you were gonna feel pain early and often. Early and often. If you think that early and often, you're okay. Yeah. Just hit or get hit first shift. Yeah, that's it. That's what Hundred percent. Always. Yeah. always. Give hit, that was the whole thing. Shift. It's uh, by the way, that's an amazing quote by you. Get hit first shift. Yeah. First yeah. shift. Get hit. Hit or get hit. Because yeah. there's nothing that gets you in the game more than that. If somebody right just fucking rocks your bell, rocks, and you're like, all right, we're my, in. Yeah. It. My dad used to watch all the games, and and he used to say, he used to say to my mom, if I if if I bled in the first period. I was going to have a huge game. <laughs> if there was blood on my face or there's blood, my dad would turn to my mom and was like, it's all over. Jay's He's going to throw game. five on these this guys. Is it. <laughs> yep, it's all over. He's going to have a game. Yeah. So, so true. I was, we're all huge hockey fans. I was a Rangers guy, and I was a goalie all growing up. Were you a Rangers guy? I was a Rangers guy. Okay. I am a Rangers guy. Right. Me too. You know, I think, I don't know, if, I assume you're on the squad, but Hextall obviously was a crazy netminder. I loved him, but... I, at the garden one time, they're all yeah. just going, Hex bro, bro, you know what? Hex So I have a, I think I'm one of the, I think I'm the only flyer in the history of the organization to get a standing ovation from Ranger fans. <laughs> standing O. Now, whether they were standing, you know, because yeah. I was leaving the ice with my jaw in my, in, in shatters. <laughs> But I dro- broke my jaw in 28 places and oh. I actually like the skated off the ice at the garden Jeez. and they were holding my jaw and I, and they stood and clapped for me. Jesus. Now, even though they clapped a lot because they were happy, but you know, the fact that I walked off the ice yeah, and I'm skated sure off the ice without, without being, yeah. yeah. But I don't think any flyers ever got a standing ovation from, from, the, from the New York Ranger fans. No it. way. Yeah. Has, yeah. So. I was going to ask though, what's the, who's the craziest goalie you've ever played with? Because Hexel. Hexel. Ed Eddie Belfort? Belfort? By far. Why so? Uh, well, we call him Eddie the Eagle, yep. right? I mean, there's, there's a lot between, you know, the, the ski jumper, Eddie, yep. that just didn't give a shit about anything. Eddie didn't give a shit about anything. He he had his ways. He had his mentality. He had his superstitions, and he, he played the game the way, but he was he was crazy as a shithouse, a shithouse rat. Didn't yeah. he just destroy one of the rooms one time after you guys lost oh, the series many, of blues? Oh, many, many. Yeah. At, at the blue, no, Winnipeg. We, we, Winnipeg? There's, we were playing in Winnipeg, and uh, one of the players grabbed the puck in overtime and grabbed the puck and threw it into the net, and they called it a goal. And I swear to God, I thought Ed, Ed, Ed was going to flip, his head was going to pop off, spin around, and kill the referee at the time. <laughs> and the referees, the coaches came out, um, but it was it was probably one of the worst officiated um, calls of all time. Yeah, the guy I mean, literally grabbed it and threw it in. Can't like, do that. And Eddie was so Ed never liked you to shoot above the pads the first ten minutes of practice, right? Let him warm him up. Anything above the pads, oh, he'd no. be okay. He'd freak. So first drill, we get this. We got this drill. You go around, you get a pass come through the center ice take a shot just you know go around come through center ice take a shot Dave Manson throws a slap shot off of Eddie Belfour's ear (laughs) so the next time Dave Manson goes he goes down he's coming back through the middle he's looking back for a pass 
Ed came flying out of the <laughs> out of the net, and right when Dave Manson picked up the puck at the blue line, it was a collision of major. Eddie Balfour knocked him on his ass <laughs> at the blue line, and it was a big brawl fight. <laughs> this is five minutes into practice. I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm like, I'm not going in there. But those guys are, like, really mean and really physical and strong. Yeah, right. But Eddie was bad. He was he was mental. I loved him. I loved every bit of him. Um, yeah, I remember just the stories on the other end of that, as again, as a yeah. blues fan. I'm just, if we And, you know, we would always... Nuts chirp and Eddie oh yeah he's chanting at him oh. try to get him going he'd be over there talking to his goal post mm-hmm. yeah. that's oh, what yeah. I was saying we, at the garden so I mean you just like you just love these old memories and you're a kid growing up and you're like you know my dream was to play in the NHL yeah. We're, the whole garden was going heck stall heck stall oh, yeah. and he'd give it up five and he and loved he, it he got yanked Turns around, tomahawks a stick over the crossbar, snaps it, and skates off the ice. Oh, and yeah. I was like, hockey is the best sport in it's the awesome. world, yeah. and I need to be he, out on that ice. And he, then I he, chose goal. He goalie. shot a puck at my head, missed me by a quarter of an inch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Hexall was just... We'll say that a little crazy to me, too. I, I think some guy hit a slap shot at me one night and just chased him. Yeah, but I would, love to, I would love to have had Hexall on my team. Oh, yeah. That would have been, like, the greatest thing of all time. I mean, competitors. Yeah, competitors, sure. he's fighting to stop the puck. Like, yeah, it's, and that guy's going to put any we like that. body in front it's of It's a little bit different nowadays, but it's fun. Oh, yeah. It's so good. Yeah, the uh, it is it is funny how almost every sport it feels like, like you're talking about, it's just a little bit softer. People are softer with, like, I the, call them the pajama boys. Yeah, the and they're all, like, best buddies. And even in, in golf or in, you know, we talk about it all the time. We want there to be some rivalries. Yeah. We want there to be some yeah, hate. for sure. Some bad blood. For sure. I mean, some, some teams have it. There's some, you know, some rivalries are there, but. You know, I'd still rather be in the back of the bus and drink a beer and play poker than drink a, a protein shake and play video games. Did you ever get into that, like, phase where you more the conditioning and all the bullshit that all the guys were doing? You had to, right? Yeah. You had to. Especially when the, when the, 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 the salary starts skyrocketing. Right. I mean, you had to. I, I had a... I had a really bad, you know, part of my career during 2004, 2005, 2006, right, where I kind of revolted against the whole mentality and, you know, almost ended my career. But, um, you know, it's you have to be in the physical. You have to be in the physical aspect now. Right. Uh, But these guys are so strong and they're so good, but yet they're so weak and so feeble. Did you play a lot of golf even when you were playing? Yeah, played a lot of golf. Especially well, I lived in Arizona Phoenix, too. Phoenix days, yeah. yeah. I mean, we would play. We'd go to practice. Next thing, we'd be on tea, the tee box by one o'clock. Who were yeah. big guys you played against? Um, so Keith Kachuk was, you know, Rick Tockett, um, Craig Janney. We would all go play all the time. So, you know, sounds like a good foursome right there. Yeah, Kachuk's your kind of guy. <sighs> yeah, he one played the, your kind of hockey. One of the best captains of all time. Yeah. One of the best captains of all time. One of the best leaders. One of the most grittiest, grindiest, um, dirty. It, yeah, it's he's a dying breed. There's nobody like like Keith Kachuk anymore. How are those golf matches go? Did you guys get heated at all? Mm. Yeah, he'll he'll always he'll always accuse me of cheating. <laughs> always found it, found it, <laughs> found it. But that's when I used to hit it into the woods. Now I don't hit it in the woods anymore. You can't do it anymore. But Make a good shirt. Yeah. Sell that shirt. It just says found, found it. Found it. Everybody's got a guy, a buddy that's like, haven't found seen it. you in five minutes oh, in the yeah. trees. They're like, found it. Found it. <laughs> then they rip one out dead to the green. You're yeah. like, I mean, come on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was that was my that was my mo with uh, with Walt. But then, you know, then he saw me in the middle of the fairway on the green, middle of the fairway on the green. So he can't he can't say that anymore. My game's <laughs> definitely gotten to be where. It's competitive every single time. You get nervous for an event like this? Uh, you don't give a shit? No, I don't really care. If I have a, you know, I'll have one vodka soda in the, in the locker room and go out and be perfect, ready to go. Would you do that in, like, when you were playing days, real playing days? Uh, I, I only played, played drunk twice. Played drunk in uh, 1994 when we were going to go, when we were going to uh, strike um, against the Union. Uh, at the end of the year and we ended up not doing it and we were drinking heavily for the whole day and um, I played hammered I got a goal and an assist and we tied 3-3 <laughs> so I, awesome. I escaped that and then I had I drank during the 2020 or 2000 
2019 All-Star Game. No, 2009. My last All-Star Game was... Shit. Shit. I can't even remember. 2019. I was like, whoa. Uh, I'm thinking 1999, 2000. 2004 was my last All-Star Game. I was drinking beers in the locker room (laughs) in between. It was great. I didn't give a shit anymore. (laughs) It was great. (laughs) Kind of like I don't now. The All-Star Game is funny you bring that up because that's such a microcosm of how much the league has changed like every pl- every team gets a player now yeah right. and it's like three on three and like there there was a huge debate like tampa should be sending just more guys and Whole colorado should, should have seven guys on right. their team like why well, are we I, I think it was always every team always had at least one the difference now is there's only what 14 players 13 yeah. players per um i like the all-star game to tell you the truth i like the i like the three on three i like i, I like how they play it um you're not gonna you're never gonna get their entire attention yeah never it's 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 vacation yeah right? you're never gonna get a an unbelievable all-star game because they can't wait to get out there and compete right it's gonna be boring as fuck it's gonna be what, boring as fuck no money could solve that like well I, well they're making money like right. they, they're offering them what a million bucks or yeah. 200 a million bucks for the winners yeah and still they're going through the motions right um, yeah, I just, I just wish I, it's hard because these guys already make so much money and they're so successful. But like, I wish the All Star Game was when we were all kids and making the All Star Game was yeah. like a really important thing. You got yeah. New Jersey and and everything was like, you know, it was your time to yeah. shine. And for them, their time to shine is every day, so it's hard yeah. to get them to, to get up for. And it. it's it's such a pressure packed situation now in, in the league these days. If you if you put them in a situation like that where they do not have to grind, they're not going to. Yeah, yeah, not at all. It, the, they're going to take a day off and just. Even if it, even if it's during the All Stars, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't knock people out in the All Star game too. <laughs> people would have loved that. I <laughs> did. I, I, I hit a lot. I, I'm thinking I'm, I hit more. I have more hits in All Star games than anybody in history. <laughs> Is that true? That? That's, that's true. That's an amazing. That's a really good stat. Yeah, hundred percent. Yep. And I've been hit more than anybody else too because they come after me too. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. All star game, you get back checked or somebody runs you in the yeah. boards. You're like, dude, I'm coming after that. I'm coming at, it's yeah, like I'm summer league hockey. Like, what are you doing? Right. Man? Chill out. Yeah. Right. That's no, incredible. It's, listen, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of correlations between golf and hockey, but the physical physicality and stuff like this isn't not. But that's why it's great to be out here with you guys, man. You guys are your golf pod, fucking bar stool, which is the. The, the, the rats, the tits of all fucking podcasts, and I love it. Even though it got me fired, I still love it. <laughs> we are we're the Jeremy Roenick of uh, of podcasting. Yeah, we're just trying to hit or get hit every shift. Really? That's me. <laughs> hit or get hit. Yeah. Uh, some big name golfers you play a lot with, or like tour golfers, tour players. Um, I, I don't play with a lot of guys, actually. To tell you the truth, yeah. um, you know, Phil Mickelson plays at my course all the time. Uh, Shifley plays there. I don't know I just I stay away. I stay away from all the all the big guys. Um, one of my one of my good friends, Tamo Solani. I set him up with Donald Trump. Yes, two days ago he played really? with Donald. Yeah, so I I set them up in a round. I've played with Donald a bunch of times. One of the best, most fun rounds you can ever have. Really? How, did you play with him while he was president? Mm-hmm. How is the like? What are the logistics? We were saying. Yeah. We watched a video. Or Trent was saying he had watched a video on YouTube about the logistics around moving the president. Unbelievable. Where there's like pints of his blood in the car. So I got to tell you a story. So we're, we're, we're playing Trump National Bedminster um, in August of 2020, right before the election. And um, we're playing and there was a security breach, air breach. So we're sitting on the 12th tee box. And all of a sudden, the you know, the... The bully comes in, the cars come in to the right, the, the Secret Service come running onto the tee box. Like, Mr. President, we have, a, we have a security breach, we have an air breach, right? And the four of us are sitting outside the realm of the security. Like, what, the, what the fuck is happening? Where is it? Where is it? You know, we're like, what? You guys and, are screwed. And Donald's like looking, like, what, where is it? Where is it? And we see this Cessna come over the hill. It comes into our airspace, right? Within three minutes you had two f-16s no way <laughs> cover this cessna no way cover the cessna and throw air flares at it pushing oh. it pushing it off to the side and we're literally like like we're sitting here right now looking up in the sky this f these two f-16s 
push the Cessna off to the side, right? I mean, the Cessna's moving at like oh, it's, 100 miles an yeah, hour. Yeah, fast. F-16s. F-16s. Going was, out and they came from both speed. sides. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, they came from both sides. <laughs> <laughs> and then they threw air flares at it. This guy had a fucking heart attack in that SS now, 100%. This is such a lurch story. This so we're sitting there. So oh, yeah. No, but so we're sitting there, right? We're sitting there. And uh, so every, the security are around President Trump. And all of a sudden they get the air. Okay, uh, aborted. You know, everything's fine. Mr. President, enjoy your golf round, right? So I'm sitting there with my jaw yeah. dropped. And Donald looks at me and goes... Jeremy, now that's power. <laughs> and I went, holy shit. That is the coolest thing I've ever seen. He's like, yes. that's." And they had, he goes, now that's power. That's why I'm the president of the United States. I'm like, that was the coolest thing I've ever seen. Holy it really shit. is yeah, another way. Yeah, there's a flying the Cessna. I mean. Oh, dude, he, they, 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 they brought him down. Oh. They brought him right down, arrested him right on the Nobody's spot. Nobody's seen him since. Okay. Yeah. But it was it was crazy because if you if you play with the president, there's 25 golf carts that accompany you. Right. So there's no matter where you're going, you go up to the tee box. There's 25 Secret Service carts, and they're surrounded. And in the trees, they have these these radars, right? These radars that pick up people. They have the bird's nests where all the people with the guns are. They have these radars. There, it is the most unbelievable, intense security you have ever seen. Jeez. And it's, I think I read an article like it might cost like a couple hundred grand per round or something. Like, it's oh, more outrageous. Than that. It's I want to say the number was like 600. It's got to be more than that. It's over a million, it's over a million dollars for him to play a golf round <laughs> Has to without even, not even a question. Uh, they do over. this every day for every president for all time. To, it, well, we just hey, let's, we're lucky we have a president now that doesn't play golf because he can't even see the ball. <laughs> it's 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 stunning. It's, it, it really is just stunning what goes into we're, security. We're, we're saving we're saving money with our president now because he just wants to go back and sit in his house in Delaware instead of going. So that's an easy that's an easy run back and forth <laughs> from Washington to Delaware with the Secret Service. When you Trump, play, not so much. When you play with Trevor, does he play lightning fast like everybody reports? So fast. Yeah. So fast. And he hits the ball right down the middle, and he just goes back, and he's he's he plays like lightning. But I will say we, we had fries at the end, and he puts ketchup in the middle of the fries, all of them, right in the middle of them. Who puts ke all ketchup in the middle of the fries? Wait, just like not all over the fries, just in the middle of them? Right in the middle of them. <laughs> like right in the middle. And I'm like, Donald, that, that's... That, you don't put ketchup in the middle of fries. Concerning he goes, behavior. He goes, that's, those are my fries. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Those are my fries. That's power. And I'm like, hey, listen. No, I, <laughs> right, yeah, he leaned in and he said, that's power, baby. <laughs> that's power, baby. That's power. Catch up in the middle. But I will tell you, he's, he is the most, one of the most fun guys to play golf with, and he's, he's a generous man. He's a, he's a very complimentary man, and, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I, I enjoy playing with him. He's one of my more fun play, of celebrities that I play with. Well, sure. it's gotta, that's got to be one of the more memorable rounds you can have, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I've played with him. I've, I've played with him probably five or five or six or seven wow. times and every single time there's there's something that just jumps out at you with them but yeah i can imagine jesus you love the he loves golf right he's like yeah. one of the biggest golf enthusiasts yeah. ever and he can play he's a good player gets uh, his hips through the balls i've seen some videos oh yeah there's a couple oh, yeah. videos out there him <laughs> striping him down the fair. <laughs> yeah. 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 never yeah. a picture he's got a big bottom half. Yeah. he does have a big bottom like, half yeah <laughs> He yeah, gets gets, he gets the bottom half through the ball really good. Yeah, <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah, so really I'm good. I'm not the biggest I'm clearly not the biggest hockey guy. These guys are the, carrying the show. But my question is, how does the body feel now? Like when you wake not up? Bad. Not bad. you, I mean, broken jaw, 28 places. Yeah. Hit every shift. Like how's that? How's that aging? Not bad. Um, you know, I've I go I go up and down. Like I'll I'll go two or three times a year where I'll really I'll get myself back into shape and I'll lose a lot of weight and get physically fit again yeah then I'll let myself go again and get fat and drink and do all that crazy stuff then I'll bring it back again um I I find you know it's crazy I find when it's a, a golf tournament I'm better when I'm fat I'm better when I'm loosey-goosey because I'm not strong I'm not pulling everything I can swing through things as honest that's it's a crazy thing but that's a Jason Duffner. Remember when he yeah. tried to get all skinny and yeah. he sucked? You're like, no, you, you, you get skinny, you, 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 you get too strong. Right. Daly said that, too. He said when he lost, he couldn't putt without the love handles. He got really skinny. Remember when he got really yeah, skinny? Yeah, it was weird. I'm it telling was, you there's something to it. Yeah. 
my and my so. wife hates it when I go to a golf tournament because she's, you know, she's like, dude, you don't look good right now. I'm like, yeah, but I play, I play like a motherfucker. <laughs> play great. <laughs> And Tiger at, at times we've said he's too jacked throughout yeah. his career where it's you like too much he gets muscle, the biceps going. Yeah. way too much muscle, can't get around the ball. Yeah, there's, there's, a, gotta, there's something to be said about it. That's why I have it. my body, loosey goosey. Sure, we're all justifying the body. Yeah. Right. Yep. yeah. By the way, you, you, I think you got to be. You're good. You don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Guys like me, we gotta we gotta <laughs> shut shut it down a little bit. But. First time I ever met Tiger, you were there actually. It was in the locker room at Shadow Creek. Shadow Creek. Yeah. Isn't that cool? At the match, remember yeah. that? At the match. My son was there. We get, we went in there. It was yeah, and I cool. did like a quick little hit with him for two or three minutes, and then yeah. you guys were right there, and you took a little picture with him. That was actually a really cool event. That was awesome. Yeah, it was a really cool event. I think, you know, the, it's getting diluted a little bit, but that was a fun fun match. At the That was probably the best one or yeah, one of the best ones. Especially when they went to a chip-off. At know, night. I was sitting right there at the chip-off, and I can't believe, <laughs> I can't believe how bad actually tiger hit those chips yeah right he had a couple yeah, that ones. stack of cash behind the green yeah, and yeah. The, remember they made a big penis from the air yeah, you can see yeah. it, it was that's like, right yeah, it's, it's the right. t-box all the people lying and it just looked like a big dick and balls <laughs> <laughs> shout out to my guy hopkins out there i love it great have you had any interactions with tiger yeah from, yeah yeah i've been i've played with tiger a bunch of times what? um i was actually with tiger 10 days before he got you know he got into his um isleworth incident you know, so playing around here, we were actually in in San Francisco right during the uh, Presidents Cup. Was it the Presidents Cup? Yeah, it was at Harding Park, right? At Harding Park. And, yep, that's exactly right. It was at Harding Park right before it was Thanksgiving time, and uh, we're hitting balls. I, I was playing and actually saw him up there, so I went and hit balls with him and just said hi. And gosh, if I ever, if I just only knew what was happening, I'm just said, don't go home. That'd be like the voice of reason. Don't go home. <laughs> Just stay right season. here. Don't go don't home. Stay right here, man. Just don't go home. Yeah, because no. that President's Cup was the year that he hit that, like, two iron and then uh, twirled the shit out of it yeah. and walked towards yeah. it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Remember that? Oh, mm-hmm. Yeah. He's, one of his best. Uh, he's a stud. I don't care what anybody says. There's there's nobody that has influenced the sport more than him ever. Nah, it's amazing. Ever. And I, I, I just hope Charlie, Charlie plays as well as he did because it'll give us something to look forward to for, yep. you know, the next generation. Is he a fun guy to play around and golf with, or is he just in his Ooh. own world, Tiger? He's all right. He's, he's, he's fun. Yeah. Play with Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley, a lot more fun. <laughs> I could imagine. Yeah, they're a lot more Bring fun. a lot of cash for those? With Michael, yeah. <laughs> yeah, with Michael. But Charles is great because Charles, Charles knows he's bad, and he he accepts every, 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 every bit of it, right? And it's just... I don't know anybody that would have a game as bad as him and continue to play as much as he does. <laughs> publicly bad as him. Right. He's arguably like the worst public golfer, like historically, yeah. the way people have looked at his swing over the years. And he keeps going out there. Yeah, but he used to be really good back in the 90s. Yeah. He used to be really good. And at, I think it was at Tahoe where he, he sliced one and hit somebody in the head. And um, Charles is one of, those, one of those people that loves people. Yeah. Like he's one of the most caring, one of the most affectionate people that really – he loves his fans and everything and he almost killed somebody with a slice a slice shot and that kind of when people are around it's it, that demon mentality gets in you. his head yep. and literally he he had that hitch because he fears he's going to hurt somebody again that's wow. awful that's and that's crazy. A, but that's a great mentality to have for him it shows you how great Charles Barkley yeah. is yeah. right that and he, he'll play and play and play and play uh, no matter how bad a swing is, because he loves it so much, but um, he has the hitch because he hurt somebody bad, right? Dang. Yeah. You ever had anything like that, like a hitch or yips in sports or hockey yeah, or that's golf? That's why I drink anything? vodka when I when I play golf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a couple shots before we go out and takes away. The... But I, um, who was it? Yvonne Lendl called me Mister Yippy. That was his nickname for me <laughs> back in uh, in early 90s when the Tahoe tournament was the celebrity tour. And I think I played, I think I had four, f- almost 36 putts in the first nine holes. <laughs> and I threw my putter in the middle of, uh, in the middle of Lake Tahoe on <laughs> the ninth green, which was 18 at the time, because I was teeing off the back. I had 36 putts, threw my putter in the, dr- in the lake and um, yeah, I was. I putted with my driver the next nine holes. Putted better, but Yvonne Lendl, um, 
he called me Mr. Yippie because I no. missed every single putt. Now you got the vodka, you'll be fine. Yeah, not anymore, though. Yeah, I remember I played in an uh, amateur tournament one time, my buddy Ryan, and we were both, I mean, there were like some of the top amateurs in Massachusetts playing in this tournament, mm-hmm. and he and I were both like four or five handicaps at the time, so we have no chance, but it's two-man best ball. First hole, I cold-topped one. He, like, grinded out a par. Second hole, he, like, hooked one. I grinded out a par. And on the third tee, he pulled out a bottle of whiskey over on the side and was like, hey. It's all over. Let's co-? And we ended up shooting 67. Right. And we were, like, tied for third after the first round of the golf. Get rid of the inhibition. You're just got to have go. that sometimes. Those, those putts become a lot straighter when that whiskey is in you. <laughs> for Start sure. playing lights out after that. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Well, anybody else? Anybody got anything? I mean. What a legend you are. What an outlook you got. Thank you. I yeah. love it, though. Sometimes it works for me. Sometimes it works against me. But Just raw and real. So people, people don't want to listen to podcasts to talk about bullshit. They want to hear what you really think. They want to hear like your life. They want to hear real opinions, right? So, might as well give it to them rather than be boring. So, couldn't agree more. You've never been boring your whole life. No, no, definitely. <laughs> You're not a boring guy. No, definitely not boring. <laughs> It'll be the last thing that's going to happen to me. Just Islanders hockey, die. right? I don't. I'm. I'm not Islanders hockey. <laughs> no, I'm saying I, you think I'm Islanders not Islanders, Islanders, Islanders hockey. Boring. <laughs> no, no, I'm not Islanders, Islanders hockey. <laughs> No. Frankie's still bitter. <laughs> I am bitter about that. <laughs> no, baby. It's okay, though. I I love the Islanders. It's okay. Thank you. I'm, I'm a fan. Appreciate I'm a fan. You. Just, I just won't watch them. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, JR. We appreciate it.